And we're back. And it's time for another question of the week. And this week's question of the week was, what new trio are you most excited about and why? And the lovely people had plenty of answers, a lot of the same answers. And most people, as usual, as you guys know, didn't actually say why, which is great. So Classic. Thank, thank you for that. Uh, but there were a couple of interesting ones here and I know people will be interested in. So somebody said, Chap Vico and Flixie and whoever Malibuka plays with, maybe Ping and Wox or something, because I don't think Cami and Seti is the best option for him, to be honest. Oh. I mean... Well, he's wrong, because <laughs> they're, they're already making it happen, right? There's, uh, there's like a 7K tournament coming this week, and Malibuka, Seti, and Cami are actually playing together. Um, so, Do you agree that that's not the best option for him? That's what. That's really where he's. So what he was putting. It. I had this discussion yesterday, right? And the majority of people say like, "Oh, why don't they come back with Teak? Or why don't they come back with like a Polish player? Like, why are they picking up Malabuka? They can't speak English." But like, you have to think about like, why the hell would they pick up someone like Teak? Considering brother hasn't played the game for like two or three years, right? Like, why would you not pick up a literal tier one player? So whether it's the best option doesn't really matter. It does. You got to try out people. That's the main thing. You know, we're four months out from trios. Mm. Try out people. See what happens. If Malabuka doesn't work, it doesn't work. No, I mean, oh, yeah. uh, I was going to quickly say, like, I think that's fair what you said about the whole, like, it's good to try out people. I don't disagree, though. I don't think it's their best option for, like, place. Oh, oh, well, oh, Harry's mic's got... messed up. Harry's yeah. mic. Oh, GG in the mic. Sorry, oh, sorry, sorry for the audio like... listeners. Oh, yeah. God. Whoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Harry yeah. ruining another oh, podcast, man. man. Oh, oh. That's before. Oh, we didn't test before. All oh. oh, right. I mean, Harry, as always. Well. Yeah. Right, go, go right, on. Come on. Yeah, go there on. we go. Yeah. It's fine it now. Fixed? It's fine now. Okay, go on. Yeah, yeah. Not refresh. Anyway. I've, I've you really, know, Reese, Reese, you just, what are you going to say, okay. We usually get quick on the on the question of the day so we can get a bunch of answers in, but sorry, I'm going to have to waffle on this because you mentioned Malabuka. So it is what it is. I, do, I, I don't see this team being like their best pick to start with, right? Let, let's let's lay the land here. Okay. Kami and Seti, not historically great fraggers, let's say, uh, probably to put it nicely. You know, maybe lacking firepower in duos. Picking up Malibuka. Now, Malibuka got some firepower, sure. Is he their best option for firepower? Debatably. You know, he also has a completely opposite play style when it comes to, like, fighting. He's a guy who just pre-edits, gets in box, does stuff like that. Like, I couldn't see, like, a, a more mix, mix match player. He's also going, like, the complete opposite, or this team seems to be going the complete opposite direction of almost every other team that's successful, where you have, like, good fraggers who, you know, learn to play the game. Whereas now you have three people who are, you'd maybe more consider smart players who can fight rather than fighters who can be smart. Uh, also, you have the probably one of the worst off-spawn teams of Kami and Seti picking up Malabuka, who just got beat off-spawn by an OCE team. Bang. Uh, that, doesn't, yeah. that doesn't seem to work in my yeah. mind. But le le one thing I will say that, that might just throw all this out there is that Malibuka is on the game 24-7. Kami is also on the game 24-7. Uh, maybe this one and trios coming back will make uh, Seti play more. So maybe we'll have like a crazy grinding trio. Uh, outside of that, I don't know if the composition will, will really work though. Yeah. I, I, I hear what you guys are saying. It's funny. I'm going to read this next one and, and we're going to link the two together here. Um, somebody basically said, uh, what trio are you most excited about moving forward? And they said, yo, Levin, Teeny Chino plus one. Honestly, the run Teeny is having right now is absolutely insanity and it's not being talked about enough. Going into non-hit scan meta, I feel as though he's going to be even more primed. This trio confirmed contesting the best POI all year next year is crazy too. I'll be honest. You look at like the, the Balkan situation of Teeny, Chicho and whatever they're doing. It looks really good. Balkan Fortnite looks, you know, as primed as ever. They have like some really good options there if they want to stay within the Balkan community. But of course, they could play with sort of whoever with just how crazy those guys are. As long as you know how to shoot your mm -hmm. I also, I've got to be sad that Teeny and Chap are no longer playing together, though. You know, right. like irrespective of the fact that Chap has a great trio potentially with Vico Flixi and, you know, all the German speaking makes sense i understand that split but at the same time i'm like teeny and chap were so good and now to split that is unfortunate on the flip side you know i feel like chicho is you know individually one of the best players out there and 
I wonder what he'll do with a guy who's more aggressive rather than playing like a more passive play style like he's been playing with True Legs so far. Like playing with cheat with you know, you think about the difference in IGLs from going from True Legs to going with uh, CD. You almost couldn't be like further on the end of the spectrum. Right? So I want to see how like versatile he is. Don't fight! Don't fight! Don't fight! Run! 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 <laughs> run! Yeah. Honestly, um, I'm I'm surprised to see Chicho and True Legs split, considering the majority of the success in their careers has been with each other, right? There was a period back in Chapter 3 when True Legs and Chicho split for a while, and they had some of the worst placements. Came back together, qualified the Grands again, you know? Um, so it's kind of like... it's I guess it, it makes sense to try to expand and try to fulfill on what Chicho Strings saw and trying to play with Teeny, play aggressively. But I do feel, like I've said before, with like, you know, the Peter Buck cold... A Peter about Poyo situation in trios potentially like over aggression in trios. We, it's it's super unknown still. We don't know what a meta is going to look like. So having already committing to saying, you know what, fuck you, Trulex. I'm playing with uh, Chicho, and now they're apparently playing with Pixie. Like we don't know if super aggressive trios is going to be a play. Um, and I think it's super super early to to kind of burn that bridge. They're obviously probably still friends, but still, I'd, I would like them to still explore that option. Anything on Harry? Is your mic? No, I was, I was just fixing my mic. Hopefully, it's good now. <laughs> I, uh, fingers crossed, all good now. Um, yeah, I mean, basically, just to touch on what Boop said. Yeah, it feels like everyone's kind of taken the whole Pia Bon Poyo thing and is run, running with it, where it's like, okay, just get the most aggressive players, the best fighters, and let's just make a trio together. But I do think with Teeny, I think that might be the one exception to the rule of like, yeah, maybe it won't work in trios because. We talked about it before that like i feel like teeny to get the best out of teeny you need to have a fighting trio i feel like if teeny plays the way that yeah. trulex and chicho play i just feel like you're getting nothing out of him you could put anyone else in that role so if you're looking to get the best out of teeny playing with chicho and probably getting another fight like you said pixie that's the best outcome for him for sure i uh but i think that trio to me is one of the more exciting ones a lot of them right now in eu especially i don't think are really going to be at, well, they're not going to be what they are in Trio F and CS. I think they don't really work playstyle wise, a lot of them, but I think that one definitely seems like a good one going forward. Okay, okay. What new Trio are you excited about? Low key, Marius, Mongrel, and Ooh. Savage. I mean, we're, we're cooking now. We're uh, cooking. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're cooking. This one is for the content. This one is for the fanboys. This one is for tiktok this i mean is it actually happening it yeah. sounds like it's happening yeah so i don't know what's going on yeah it sounds like it's yeah. happening but i don't know because i felt like there was a point where savage and marius should have played maybe like maybe last season when you know savage and mongrel didn't make grands and maybe mongrel wasn't going to play another year but then obviously they went to na i don't know in trios if that works at all i feel like to get the best out of savage you need to let him be like the sort of like focus on the fighting and be that support player and be more support mm. than being the sole IGL and just full tarping in trios, right? Mm. I don't know if adding another fighter to that tr uh, to that duo is solving your problems. So I, Agreed. I see. I say the biggest issue Mongo and Savage clearly have is just the fighting. I think they are probably like the, the when they make it to end game, they have good end games, they're really good, but they struggle at making it to end game. They struggle in spawn fights, but what we saw in uh, draft situations and stuff like that, and they struggle when they get aggressive on in mid game. So I think adding Maris to me actually makes a lot of sense. It's extra fighting power, and it's someone that's consistently going to be able to get eliminations for them in late game and sort of help Mongo on the back top guide himself through. Like Savage is 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 good enough. Like he can sort of top the whole way. He doesn't mind doing that. I think either. I don't think he's a selfish player that he wants to go fragging and go crazy in that sense. So I think this makes a lot of sense. And to answer your question, yes, it is true. Uh, I was watching Savage's stream yesterday, and he was like, "Wait, Mary's got a 33 kill win in solo cash cup. All right, let me send him a message. Let's play trio scrims this week. So uh, <laughs> there you go, boys. If you want to play with Mongo Savage and drop 40 bombs in solo cash cup, you can be Peterbot. I mean, that would be nice to watch. And at least Marius doesn't mind streaming, I assume. Yeah. Um, he started streaming with face cam re just recently, so he's getting ready Oh, yeah, because everyone oh, yeah. was saying that he's yeah. boobs. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I've noticed. Yeah, I've noticed. Yeah. Hey, I don't Boy. even... <laughs> I was like, I saw I joined your stream and everyone was like, oh, your son's live. Like, what are you talking about? Like, what? So, so some of the kind of looks Asian looks exactly like you. Yeah, yeah. Classic yeah. Fortnite community. Never change. Oh, Never man. change. Uh, all right. Um, this, this one's, I was not expecting to see this one. What is a new tree you're excited about and why? 
And the one and only Scully replied, saying ADN, Michael, and Astro SMZ. <laughs> yeah, that, that, all, that all come back to the they're game. Back. They're, all, they're all back. No way. UK Fortnite yeah. is back. <laughs> Yeah, actually, yeah, because that's why I'm now duelist, because Aiden's actually taking it seriously. So he's no actually got way. a proper duo. Yeah, he's wow. actually got a proper duo now. So, yeah, no, they're actually probably going to play next year. So that's, that's UK Fortnite is actually back. We're that's not hard. we're not relying on CZB and Nathan. We've actually got some mm. some aura. We've got some aura back. You know, we've got some top players back. That's actually insane. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what are you truly excited about? Reese Hub Destiny Jesus and Aussie Antics. I heard they're trying <laughs> to win globals next year. <laughs> yeah. The amount of people who have said, I've said, I think we said this last time as well, they're like, they come in there and ask like, who are you guys doing with? Or sorry, who are you guys trewing with? And, and the amount of people who just put like, Resub, DJ, Aussie. I'm like, firstly, I know you're just memeing on that side, but then people are serious when they go, Resub, DJ, Boop. And I'm like, no, bro. No, no, neither of not, not good no, enough. To, to yeah. You, you need at least two people with hands on the trio to make it work. Yeah, right exactly. Yeah. And zero already isn't, isn't a good start. <laughs> yeah, so, be up to one I, I, point. We're going to, I think we are going to, uh, if Apex Listen, not pay someone, but we might pay someone to. <laughs> To play with us who's like a tier three or, or tier two you know it's just someone yeah. all, who can play for us yeah. for a season yeah. like put the application out what are we looking for here yeah, yeah what are we uh, what, for? what's our budget you know like what's uh, hypothetically Ooh, what, what, what's the well, not paying budget you're yeah, looking for right now uh, it depends i'm i'm you know, rich as fuck yeah, obviously know, balling yeah. out 24 uh, 7 you know we can we can afford DJ's uh, a rich of the master class uh, yeah. exactly yeah. exactly yeah. exactly you know that's just been going good so uh, you know, we we have a, we've got a, a steep budget, so any any anyone who has a potential at making grand finals but is too shit to get a good teammate, uh, I think you got to you got to hit us up mm. if you want to be a content. But good at fighting, year. but can carry the. You fight. have to be good at fighting. No IGLs, no IGLs. So, so please. There need to be a torper, a fragger, that. a farmer, <laughs> no, 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 a good no, no. age. They're looking DJ, for you, okay. Boop. That's what they're doing. I they're looking for I you. Uh, DJ will talk. <laughs> DJ. DJ is actually a fucking goated tarper. Yeah. I'll give him, I'll give him his props for that. He's a really good tarper in endgame, so he can do that no problem. Uh, I, I'm not shooting and hitting any shots, so you know if I'm in back tarp, like I'm, I'm playing support. You're getting mats. I'm giving them to DJ, and that's my you role need a entirely. Babysitter in for Reese to make sure he doesn't die fall damage randomly. Basi yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you've got to be able to place armored walls, also. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, oh, that's, that's a bit of a weakness out, of mine. Damn. So. Yeah. Levin, yeah, yeah. Levin, you said you you need at least some people with hands in the trio. Who's got the hands in our trio? Because I, I feel like there's a fair <laughs> lack of um, fighting power here. Uh, yeah, we, uh, we'll figure it out. We'll figure it yeah. out. I, I think some Prey strats might come in. I've, been, yeah, I've, I've been practicing in the, the resub practice map, you know? I have uh, been practicing in the resub practice map. He's getting dangerously PC, yeah, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. codes 1224. Four, <laughs> 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 um, all right. Last one. What new trio are you excited to see in the future? Whatever Hoyo's trio is, I wonder if you can keep up or even outplace Peterbot. Mm. Mm. Well, for the people who are listening to this who don't know, somehow, Peterbot and Poyo will not be playing trios with each other. Peterbot last week decided he would be dropping Poyo uh, to play with Cold plus one more. Right now, they've been playing with Booga, it looks like, and <laughs> that could change, but essentially, Peterbot and Poyo are no more. The fantasy trio of Peterbot, oh. Poyo, Cold didn't even make it past a week. Uh, I'm <laughs> yeah, chat. Uh, Basically, and, and I can't explain. tarp in trios because I'm just limiting myself in like my ability. You know what I'm saying, chat? So me and Cold are just gonna try out like uh like the three best tarpers on the region, probably. But as of now, I think we're gonna uh run that shit with like uh Booga. There you go. Yeah. Fair enough. Booga, I mean, right. yeah. So uh. I think I want to kick this one off when it comes to we'll, we'll, we'll kind of tie us together, right? But when it comes to Peterbot and Poyo, what I don't understand is the sheer commitment of Peterbot to decide to play with Cold over Poyo to start with, right? Like, obviously, Cold is, is Cold. He's one of the best players in the world. But there's one cash cup at the minute's proof that they can do good. Obviously, they won it, you know, so, you know, you could sit and say yeah, there's, there's obviously some, the pudding, there's right? some good yeah. proof yeah. there, right, to start with. But to so early, like, full commit just to being like, I'm going to play me with Cold and an IGL or, or Tarper rather than me 
Hoyo in a tarper with all the success they've had this year is something I don't necessarily understand yet. Maybe, you know, it's like, it's one of those things where it's like, oh man, my girl's like a 9.5 out of 10. Oh shit, there's a 10 over there. You know, <laughs> like maybe, maybe I should risk it all. And, this, and, and like that 9.5, bro, they were doing good. She has a good personality. You know, She's a 9.5 with a great personality. Yeah. yeah. She's there. She's to support you. Practical. She makes you dinner every day. <laughs> you know, uh, exactly. <laughs> At this point, you know, I, I, especially with like Cold's grinding inconsistency is probably the right way to put it. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, how does that work with, with the way that Peter Bottons play? They grinded every tournament. They practiced the shit out of everything last year. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of questions that, I mean, if it works, holy shit, it's going to work. Like, I, I, absolutely. But it's also one of those teams where I think like maybe Peter Bot with Acor with I keep saying Acor with Cold could just be like an all star team that might just not be as good as people think. Uh, we'll see. Well, for me, I I just I don't get the timing. Like as you said, it didn't mm. even make a week. Like we didn't even get to have <laughs> know what the meta is, know what the the map's looking like, know how Trio is going to be because the game is not going to be the exact same now. Surge probably isn't going to be the same. Like because if you put trios into competitive now, it wouldn't work. Like, the games would go to infinite heal off every game. It would, most of the time, Surge would just be insanely high. So things are going to change. And they didn't even let it, like, they didn't even, like, wait for it. And then on top of that, it's like, they're three good players. One of them can just tarp. It's like, it's like at the end of the day, right, mm. we're not asking them to become an insane fighter, which is a lot harder thing to become a very, a tier one, tier one tarp when you're already, like, a top, top fighter, right? And... I also think on top of this, it's like, you've cut, up, cut off your options with Poyo. Realistically, if Cold, Peterbot, and Boogle, whoever, whatever Tarpa doesn't work, right? Most, m in most scenarios, is going to be doing well, because if Peterbot and, Poyo, uh, Peterbot and Cold aren't winning tournaments, is probably going to be high up on the leaderboard as well. So there's a very low chance that they're going to be able to go back to Poyo and go, you know, yo, can we, you know, we made the mistake, can you come back? Please now, come back. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah. And on, also, on top of that, you didn't have to rush to get Booger. If we know anything about Booger, he's not the most <laughs> loyal player of all time. It's, right. if, it could be one day before FNCS and Peter Bot and Cole well, could come to Booger and say, yo, can we trio? And he's going to drop everything and trio well, with you. Well, well, Harry, what, what you're saying there about like doing it too early, it's bang on the money because genuinely, if, if Peter Bot and Cole are together, any player on yeah. NA is <laughs> sneaking to play with them. No matter when, yeah. the day of FNCS, they could get 99% of players in NA to play with them. So why wait? Why do it now? Like, it just for me, the timing, like you guys are saying, the timing for me is just odd. Like, I don't, I don't know. I know. I know it. Go on. Peterbot is masterminding the reverse Booga snakening. <laughs> he's uh... he's, he's going to wait until the day of FNCS. He's planned it three, four, five months in advance. Yeah. And on the day of FNCS, they're just going to play with Poyo. Yeah. And then Booga's going to be left through. Oh, it's Booga's not going to be able to play scrims and Poyo's like, oh, I'll just fill for you. I'll just fill for you guys. Just to like, yeah. <laughs> so they're getting little bits of practice here and there. And then it's the day of and they snake. But uh, yeah, I just, I don't get it. We don't even, we don't even know anything about, apart from the fact it's true is we know nothing. And the one, I hate this point. It's my biggest pet peeve is everyone's saying that, oh, Booga was great in trios. Benji has quit the game, gone into Valorant <laughs> Amateur, then gone to Valorant Pro, and made World Championship Finals in the time that Booga was a good tarper in trios. This means and he nothing. he wasn't that good of a tarper in trios. Yeah, and he wasn't like that, that good also. of a tarper yeah. in trios. So it doesn't mean anything that he was good in trios. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 It's, it's, it's also, I, I wonder how it feels like, as like it, it feels like it's kind of like biting the hand that feeds you. Right? It's like, one of the one of the weird things that I remember from from Peterbot um, when he was talking about it in that clip, and there was a little bit more to on things. So he's like, "Yeah, well, when we were playing trio scrims, me, Cold, and Poyo, like I I noticed Poyo, I was actually out fragging both me and Cold, and then I realized, like, <laughs> I you know, I'm not really going up to my full potential. I'm just like, <laughs> is is this like an ego thing? Like, do I do I not want Poyo to have more kills than me, and because <laughs> I'm the better player? Like, that's what it felt like to me. It's like, yeah, Poyo, he can't be getting more kills than me. I'm Peterbot, bro. I'm that guy. How can Poyo have more eliminations than me in Trio Scrim? So, I don't know. I, like, some of the success, I think, is some of the success has to be attributed to Poyo, right? And like you said, it's a little bit early to do so. And who knows? The meta might change. You might want Poyo coming back. And then you're kind of just already destroying the vibes. Because, like, if you can't really come. I mean, you probably come back to it. But it's, it's not... Um, 
not the wisest choice this early. Look, uh, to to a certain degree, I understand the ego element of it, of like, um, poor you're having more kills than me or whatever. I understand that just from the perspective of like, I do think in most cases in trios, Peterbot shouldn't be the one tapping. Right, like I think that makes sense. Like I think yeah, it's some, um, you definitely. know, like if 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 we're looking at it, Peter Bot should be given the freedom to do anything he wants on what team he's on, right? Because that's how you're going to maximize him the most. Cold's not going to be the tarpa. Hell, no, Cold's not going to be the tarpa. <laughs> which means that you're left with Poyo. And so again, does Peter Bot clearly Peter Bot doesn't trust Poyo to be the tarpa to commit uh, and and like follow him and allow him to lead. Still, though you surely like give him the time to work it out just like how he had to work out being a support player to you when Poyo was always the fragger in the teams he played with and he was one of the best fraggers you look at you know when he was playing with sphinx he was consistently like top in, or in like the top fives of like damages and in fncs's and whatnot and the limbs and whatnot so it's like he had to change his game to play with you in the first place and you won everything at least give him a, a month to, to you know yeah change his game a bit more and uh, yeah it, it seems the timing to me is weird the decision itself there's logic behind it. i don't think it's necessarily like the worst idea in the world no. uh for them to to say okay we don't want to play with poyo we want to you know get an igo in or a really good tapa um with that being said you know booger being that that option you gotta love Booga, man. I don't know how he's finessed his way into this team. <laughs> uh, I, I love Booga. I, I know we get through this Booga haters, and I feel bad because we yeah. are just doing another Booga hate podcast. But I actually like Booga, and I spoke to Booga <laughs> after Globals, and I asked him about his trio options, and like the, from the conversation we had after Globals about what his trio options were to him now playing with Peter Buck <laughs> and Cold. It doesn't make flipping sense. It makes no flipping sense. And I know that brother is just fucking smiling ear to ear every fucking night, knowing that somehow he has finessed his way into it. It, it baffles me. Oh. It baffles me, mate. I mean, ah, oh, man. Fair yeah. play to, Look, to Buga. I, fair he's play. a generational talent. He is. At Mind manipulation must be. <laughs> he, is, like, he must be. He gets or, the best options every single season. And then on top of that, yeah. like I, w I want to say quickly, like, Reese, did you touch on your latest video about how Pia Bonpoyo's success came from trying in cash cups, really like trying in every mm. single tournament? You think Colton and Booger are going to be trying that hard in every single tournament <laughs> there is and every single no. scrim? You think Booger with his millions in his bank account is going to be trying that hard for like $100 in a cash cup? What? Well, no, to, not really. To be fair, Booger doesn't have millions anymore because he's kidnapped Peterbot's family, and that's where the money yeah. went to. <laughs> <laughs> he's got billions. He's a ransom. <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, I, I see that. That's a, that's a massive consider, contri oh, contribute factor. I think what's really weird about this. Is that I totally just forgot what I was going to say. I'll I'll say something. It's like, such a good point. Yeah, but yeah go for it. Um. In oh, I remember, oh, Shab Harry, uh, Shab Harry. No, I got a better point, right. <laughs> what I was going to say right, is, fine. Peter Bot's success has mainly come when he has actually IGL'd as well, mm. which is something I, I think is interesting because obviously with Poyo, he is, he is it's duo, so it's not as much tarping, but he is tarping and leading in endgame for the most part, and Poyo is supporting. You know, he played with Booga already, and it wasn't that successful when Booga was leading. And obviously that was duos, it wasn't necessarily trios. In in trios before he was a good kind of you know, fragger and support player but that was so long ago you know now it's interesting i'm thinking with the trio with pewbot having less decision making power and just being put in the back of the tarp to frag or to support when you've already got acorn who can do that too like does this team actually make sense no. from that perspective either no it doesn't make sense and then also um like I'm pretty sure, if I'm not mistaken, Poyo did a lot of the early game decision making, right? A lot of the early game surge mm. planning and everything. If you think about Booga, what is probably his worst attribute when it comes to eye gelling? I'd say it's pre plan. plan. Yeah, it's game plan. It's game planning. So they're replacing what was their early game and how they set up their game and replace it with someone who notoriously has bad game plans for early game and in general for the game. So it's not even like they're improving. I, I just don't get it. I, I generally don't get it. I feel like mm. there's a lot of good igls they could have got if they want to go that way but i i think the biggest thing is you didn't even give poyo the chance i, I think if we are gonna look at it in a positive light and try and like say why this could work right without just completely being booger haters um 
if you were then gonna say what is like Booger's strength been as an IGL uh, over like the the past couple of years, uh, well, one big thing that he's always been really good at is just like stretching and getting the most out of like whatever situation they're in. Like you you know he's gonna scrape you into an end game, even if you know you end up in that end game with like significantly less mats than most of the lobby. Like you know he's gonna do that more often than not, right? Um, even on dif- difficult moving zones, like he's going to maybe make a solo rotate that is a bit scuffed to follow, <laughs> but he, he'll make the rotate to get you to that next moving. With that being said, if you could then put two players who are going to be able to get you out of the worst situations consistently every time, who would those two players be? It's Cold and Peter. Not, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I would put that, actually. I, I, because... think, I think that is... So that is... I think... That's why Miro and Booga work yes. so good. Right. Is because right. Miro is that guy. Right, right, right. Kanada, Cooper, those are those guys who are like, maybe not Kanada as much, but like those are those yeah. guys who you continually watch and you're like, what the fuck are they doing, man? Well, how have they got no mats? And then they're still alive yeah. 10 minutes later. You're like, what is going on here? With the games we saw from Peter Bott and Poyo, at least, obviously, I, I can't really speak about uh, Cold as much, but the games we watched, at least at the Globals, the games where they were scuffed, there was not a good amount of like combat potential outside of the solo clutches, obviously the two that we saw. But they were set up pretty good to start with as yeah. well in terms of like early surge and uh, good match to start with. There wasn't many games where they were scuffed and they made a play and they brought it back out of that because those are the games where they actually died. Yeah, right. I don't think I don't think Pia Bon Poyo were a team that made bad situations good situations. They got the most mm-hmm. out of the best loot which is still a skill in itself how many teams get raf coin or get forecast and don't get top games pia bombayo they get all the loot and then they dom- dominate the game completely they are literally the they are the thanos of the lobby you feel you have no space when you play against them but like as you said reese i think canada cooper mirror are the kings of you literally are watching them you're like what the fuck are you doing and they're fifth <laughs> place every game without fail right and yeah yeah, I, I don't know. I Cold, maybe more so. I know Cold has definitely been someone who gets a lot out of nothing, right? He's always been, if you think about, maybe Shit not this Global Championships, it. but yes. the one where it was contested by Pink, they had literal like bandages they were carrying yeah. around and <laughs> and they were getting absolutely no loot and still got top 10 in that Globals, right? So Cold, maybe more so, but Beobot's more been the one and maybe it, maybe they'll still go for it. And I would be surprised if they didn't. The best loot if there's forecasts, if there's islands, they'll go for every single one. They, they absolutely and... will. Peter, Peter Bolt won't be mm. playing if, if you know if he if he's not going to go for that. But Cold definitely yeah. Yeah. is as he's made a career out of that. And and I understand what you guys are saying about like Peter Bolt and Poyo weren't maybe the best at getting bad out of good, uh, good out of bad situations. But Peter Bolt is the best player in the world. Yeah, he is. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. so you put him in a situation where he's more scuffed. And like we saw at the Global Championships when he is a solo in a lobby, he's going to get you something. And so for me, I look at that and I go, if, if, if Booga is the person that's going to be leading them in end games, they're going to be fine because Cold and Peterbot yeah. are going to get them out of shit situations consistently. So I don't think this composition of the team is as bad. And I'd also assume, like, I'd also assume that Peterbot would want to play with somebody who, like, <laughs> The, word, the phrase I'm going to use here might be weird in terms of like, he was going to want to play with someone who he feels he could probably bitch out of IGL in. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, like he's going to want to yeah. play with someone who like, he can ultimately make the final call if he, he wants didn't want to. He didn't want a hard IGL. He's right, right exactly. Topper. Like he doesn't want a hard, yeah. they don't want a hard IGL. They just want someone who's a really good topper. The, maybe my NA That's knowledge good. isn't like as, as good here, but then I'd say, was Booger still the best option for that? Like, are there people who are better toppers who can keep up in frag with Peter Bott and Poyo. I'd assume there are, but yeah. yeah. I mean, again, they did say, he did say in the clip, like they'll try with more people than Booger. So if yeah. it works with Booger, mm-hmm. it works with Booger. If not, they can literally ask anyone to play and yeah. they will play. Well, the word for word they said was, we're going to try with the top three Tarpers, but for now we're playing with Booger. Right. Hmm. And then Which, mentioned... I don't know if that means we don't believe he's a top three Tarper or we're just playing with him for an hour. I don't yeah. know what I don't know what like the I think Booga was included in that. Yeah, I think yeah, there is. I think it was yeah. Booga. I think he named yeah. them. It was Booga, it, it, Rise, it was... and I think Bolts. I'm not. I don't fully no. remember the third one. Mm. No, I don't know if Bolts. No, it was Booga, Rise, and there was one other person. I don't. Yeah. Know. I literally said it in the video. It's but like, I, yeah. I think it. Like if it would be an obvious decision, it would have been Acorn if Acorn and Cold did well, in my opinion. Like if they had done what well, better, yeah. obviously they won mm. the first FNCS, but if they didn't have a better, I feel like Acorn is probably the best Tarper on the region. 
So I feel like that would be an obvious one, but maybe, yeah, the fighting ability maybe, and also the fact they didn't do too too well, like towards the end of the season or the end of the year, maybe put that into consideration. But yeah, I mean, we'll see. I think it's a very interesting thing. And as you said, I think I, I don't think we need to just keep it to NA. I think if Pierre Bonpoyo ask anyone from any region, <laughs> they're, they're moving. Like if, well, if Vino's mm. getting asked, I mean, you, you saw the Vino replies on Twitter basically saying, I don't know. I don't know if uh, I don't know if Boog is the best option. Rise is a good tapper, but I think I'm the best option. I think I, they should play with me. So, um, so I, some some inside information for you. <laughs> I'm so glad you mentioned that because I was completely forgot this. I wasn't even going to say this. Yeah. Um, so when Booger, when Peterbot dropped Poyo, uh, I knew he had dropped Poyo before he said it on stream and before they had actually yeah. done it because he had been asking, he had been DMing people, like he DM'd. Poyo had DM'd Acorn, sorry, to say like, oh, yeah. hey, I got dropped. Uh, like people don't yeah. know yet, but I got dropped. And I'm in call with Acorn and Venno. And as soon as Acorn tells us that, <laughs> Venno stops what he's doing and starts DMing <laughs> Peter by <Bottom> Point. <laughs> like, he starts DMing <laughs> Peter by Point. Like instantly, start, like yeah. he instantly dropped what he was doing and started DMing Peter by, uh, which I found <laughs> fucking hilarious. So yeah, he definitely is advertising himself. And you're right. They could play with anyone in the world they want. Um, yeah. realistically so it'll be interesting to see whether it stays as Booga or if things evolve on the Poyo side of things though it's rumoured that Poyo's going to be playing with Acorn and Bolts what do we make of the, the prospect of Acorn, Bolts and Poyo I personally think that's a phenomenal trip I'm like, moved I'm, I'm, moved. I'm yeah. very I'm moved, moved too. <laughs> yeah I, I, I think the main thing that's interesting now is like because Pierre and Poyo aren't together it doesn't feel like it's a locked first place anymore like, it felt like on NA, if Peabot, Poyo, and Cole play together, no matter what happens, they've got first place, you're all kind of just playing for second place. And I feel like removing Poyo, kind of just like, whoever Poyo plays with, they're, they're going to have a good trio no matter what. What Poyo's shown over the past two years is adaptability on playstyle. We talked about him being a fragger, supporter, uh, being sort of a supporter to Peabot as well. Like, I feel like who, whatever trio he goes on is going to be good, and getting an IGL like Acorn and a top player like Bolts as well, I feel like it's, it's a top, top trio. I feel like this is going to age horribly, but by the sound of it, Acorn, Poyo, and Bolt just sounds like a better trio. Just like, when you think about the game mode trio, it's like, mm. when I'm thinking of consistency, I'm just like, oh yeah, that's a consistent-ass trio. In before, Peter Ball, yeah. Poyo, uh, Peter Ball Cole just dominate <laughs> everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, yeah. Clip this bell, clip that bell, it's not I'm, included. I'm, <laughs> I, can see, I can envision it in front of me, like, seeing that trio be super, super consistent and just playing one, just like, winning the first FNTS or something, right? Like, um, I think it makes sense. I mean, it is like the ex-girlfriends, like, trio kind of, right? Like, it's like, it's the, the, the second-hand players that all kind of put together and they've got like a vengeance against the old rivals but uh, i think it makes a lot of sense uh to go back slightly upon the other point i think the 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 uh, equal not being considered at all for that other trio of peterbot and cord is kind of diabolical i think like the tiktok comments have kind of gone into peterbot and and, and cord like they see the tweets and everyone memeing a could like it could need some more respect man like it i think oh, yeah, Acorn's so. a very good he's mm, going to be yeah. a very good trio player like he embodies yeah. everything i think that requires in trios like sure he might be a bit of an unk he might be a little bit old in terms of fighting but you know he's he's gonna be consistent and i think in terms of typing that's a very valuable asset to have and I would I would trust him probably more than than Booga in the late game there. So <laughs> one thing about about tarpers that I think is actually valuable is that having an unk tarper is actually probably beneficial because yep. there are some tarpers who just get a little ahead of themselves and they're like, you know, what, I'm just I, I gotta see an opportunity here. I'm gonna take it myself mm -hmm. rather than you know actually putting your team in good positions to allow them to make those plays. And Acorn's the kind of guy who isn't going to see a guy front side and be like, I'm just going to jump on him. Fuck mm -hmm. it. We're going to pre edit play right now. No, he's going to get you into a good position. He's going to tarp you well. Um, and I feel like that was actually one of the issues. I, I, I'm, this is not meant to be a booger hate train, but apparently it was just turning turn it <laughs> oh, into the this. comments. That was one of the issues uh -huh. that I've seen when I watched Booga's gameplay in particular was that he was almost like a fighting tarper where he would try and cut people off and fight them himself. He would like stop tarping to fight people on his lair at certain times. Obviously, this is a long time ago that where I'm talking where I'm talking about yeah. trios. So you know, maybe he's evolved a lot since then. I hope so. Um, but that's one of the issues that I wouldn't see Acorn make. And if you've got guys like Acorn, uh, sorry, if you've got I keep saying Acorn. If you've got guys yeah. like Cold and Peterbot in the back of your tarp, you want someone who's just gonna 
put you in a good position, yeah. set them up, they give you some mats, they frag out, and you're good to go, you know? Yeah. I love on Fantasia we bring the great analysis of you need an unk tarpa. An acorn is too unk. Like, this is what we're doing. <laughs> well, we're, trying to, we're trying to mix in the new audience, you know, trying to get the kids in to watch the podcast. Yeah, you, know, you gotta yeah, use cool yeah. terms like unk. Hey, I, said, I said on one of the podcasts last week, I was like... Uh, I think it was like Seti lost aura points, and there was a yeah. TikTok on like there was a sh comment on TikTok or some shit where they're like, "Why are these old men saying aura <laughs> points?" Like, and the funny thing is, yeah. another guy responded to that comment was like, "I'm 22 and I don't say this shit, and these guys look much yeah. older than me." <laughs> I'm, like, I'm fucking 22, <laughs> mate. Fuck you. Like, the fuck? Shut up. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I, I think Acorn Bolts and Poyo is such a good show. Um, one thing I know Acorn probably struggled with playing with cold was that cold is not the type of player that's going to like secondary igl to any significant degree um cold is going to follow and you know do what cold does which is kill koyo we know has the ability to give positive input and i think acorn will value that a lot and that will help them going into like a trio a new trio or a new trio world where the game's presumably going to be quite different and then bolts is obviously one of the best fraggers available, like probably the yeah. best fragger available uh, right now in NA where it's like, you know, everybody's trying to play with bolts if they can. People are trying to cook up things where they can get him into their team. So, yeah, no, this, it, I hope it doesn't age poorly, Boop, but I, I'm, you know, I, I sort of like that, that take. Hopefully we can like, you know, clip that at the end of next year and they've like fucking, you know, bossed it. One all three. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that'd be, yeah. that'd be an, insane. Um, all right, then enough about Peter and Poyo because we talk about those guys every bloody week now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, welcome back to another episode of the FNTJ podcast, episode 23. Of course, it's been a we, we had a week off actually. There was no episode last week, uh, which I'm sorry about, but we needed a bit of a break and there was nothing to talk about. To be honest. <laughs> like Honestly, nothing. it was it was Harry's fault. Everyone told me to blame Harry on this one. It was Harry's fault. Yeah. 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 yeah, I was, I was, yeah, yeah. I wasn't the one on holiday. You can, uh, you can blame two other people mm -hmm. on this podcast. I don't know mm. what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> anyway, what talking about. Uh, well, we are back now. We're back better than ever. Um, and we're back reading some of your comments. So uh, we have some comments from YouTube. We have some comments from Spotify. I will say, guys, as well, before we read some comments, thank you very much for all the support recently. This has been bloody crazy. People who listen on Spotify, the people who listen on YouTube. The last ep on YouTube was the most watched ep of Fantasia. 14,000 people watched. Let's go. That's bloody insane. The longest um, episode, too. It's our, it was our longest episode as well. Yeah. So yeah, big up to all of you stuck through that and watched. Um, yeah, your support is is greatly, greatly appreciated. Boop, you got some YouTube comments for us? What, what are the people saying? Yep. So uh, I got a comment from Ev Rizzo. We talked about the guy in the Peely costume. That was him. Shout out to Ev. He listens oh, to the Fantasia yeah, podcast. Wow. And he actually did get Dope. permission from Julia weeks before. So he actually didn't sneak into the bathroom and, and, and put on the banana <laughs> costume. But like, uh, apparently he had a lot of good feedback from it. And his friends were actually rejected, uh, even though they had like stall one pickaxes and stuff like that and med no kits way. in the venue. So wow. uh, maybe we, we gotta we got to help out the cosplayers for next land because, you know, we need more dancing. Fortnite thingies. That's the thing we miss from the OG lands. Remember like the mm. OG Fortnite yeah. lands and they just used yeah. to have like fucking a million like cosplayers okay. and shit. Like low key, even though we all hated it back then and it was corny, like I, f I want that back. No, Let's it's good, it's good. No. Yeah. no, 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 no. Listen, 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 listen. No, 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 shit your mouth. <laughs> that, right, that was epic hired people and they were cringe as fuck, right? That that was oh, it. Oh, okay, okay. Sorry, sorry, guys. If you, I, I, I respect that it was a job, but it My... was. It was. Go and watch it. They they were like, you know, doing all these dances and shit. It was it was actually cringe. But you get like fan people going in. They've got their own costumes. They got to line up. They put effort into it. It looks great. You know, they don't have kind of the corniness with it. It's more just like a fan side thing. Like this is the Peely costume. Awesome, right? It's like you can have the costumes without having like the cringe right. of oh, this is Fortnite a kids game. Well, the, I need the to costumes see. I... Inherently cringe in itself, but we yeah. love the, the the costume. I do agree with you though. Yeah, it should be like fans mm -hmm. doing it rather than like you know epic employees doing it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. 11 when when we but get your employees it was just like <laughs> so hired random, dancers they found them on the street it was like, a casting call yeah. So. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, when are we getting your taco costume 11 you know you got it in your bundle <laughs> we need to we need the costume 
The Eleven Two K Taco Time Bundle is dead. It has not been seen in the item shop for over a year now. So people yeah, you, can blame, you can blame Eleven. I heard he's yeah. holding it hostage. He's making sure he doesn't go out to it. It's got it's got higher demand. <laughs> yeah, that's actually yeah. Six I told people him. devastated yeah. right now. I mean, they were releasing it like every month for a period in time. Mate. I was fucking bawling. Um, right. you're, saying, you're saying they like it's not you who releases it. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. Uh, I got some Spotify comments as well. We'll go back and forth on these, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> well, Father said, I love listening to Fantasia every week. I drive a lot and these help me with my long journeys. Keep it up, boys. Thank you very much, Father. Nice. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Sounds weird to say out loud. But... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You're going to say amen at the end. Uh, <laughs> amen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I got one from T Ward on YouTube, and this is one for the football boys. He says, Thomas HD is just the Harry Kane of Fortnite. Ooh. Oh. Good, com good comparison there. That's actually a great comparison, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. Reese, explain that comparison to us. Yeah. I'm curious. Uh, he never wins. Hey, 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 hey. Right, go uh, the problem is Harry Kane I'm... is a useless piece of shit and Thomas H. is going to controversial. I'm not oh. talking I won't say anything. Oh, I'll I get refuse another block by Thomas. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I refuse to speak. I said Thomas wasn't, that's why the comparison was. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. no. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna clip and edit that so it makes you look bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Uh, so Thomas HD, it's a piece of shit. That's, what, that's what's going to be clipped <laughs> into. <laughs> Evolito on Spotify said, Hot take, you should start with your mat cap at 350, and for every kill you get, your mat cap goes up 10. Ooh. Bloody hell, mate. Cypher, some, more, some more siphon trial type shit we're seeing there, mate. Mm. Jeez, okay. It's not a bad idea. He's, he's, no, he's not bad. Like trio. For trios, he's cooking, for yeah. sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen 15 kills to get 5 5 yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Kamen City screwed, mate. Um, that's why they got Malabuka. Yeah. That's why. <laughs> yeah, Ma Malabuka, you need to yeah. jump in this box right now. We need 150 more mats. <laughs> <Come on. laughs> I don't care if you die, please. <laughs> we'll play the game normally. You just, you just yeah. get those kills. Yeah. Uh, so we got one from Eve Rabbi, and he says, Resub, Destiny, Jesus, and Archie would cook as a trio. <laughs> me the oh, he's moved. Loki. Archie's aim is, you know, you watch him in in game. We're not doing he Archie. Either nothing. He either yeah. hits nothing or he hits max bangs. Yeah. Yeah. There's no minimum. He's he's not a minimum guy. He's either a, he's either a zero or full max damage, and that is more that can be said than me and Disney Jesus. Yeah, yours so is zero my, or uh, zero. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a couple thirteens. Zero in there, or I minimum know. is the, uh, is the Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I uh I got one gold pump and had a single max damage bang with it, and I was like, right, that's my quota for today done. I've, I've achieved what I need to in this the, tournament. The fact that you still remember that says enough about like how often that happens. It was. I got a max pump once last week. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um. All right. Patrick said, "Love the pod. Have waited for something like this for a long time, and love the smack talk to the ginger goblin." <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Yeah. Just, just wait to our lad. Mm. They won't say it to my face. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not ready. I mean, they have to be looking down on you, so it's fine. I hope you uh, see okay. I, I think, I think, I think, tall, yeah. It was actually yeah, very I'm, tall. He doesn't look it. Very tall yeah. than yeah, you. Yeah, I, I think no? two of you in here are pretty small. So yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm outgrowing my genetics. You know, I'm up there. So yeah, yeah, I'm just looking at these. My genetics. <laughs> hey, as a man, or as a mother who's one fifty, like you know, four, six feet's pretty good. You know, what is 150? 150 like, one fifty? One hundred fifty centimeters. Five six. One hundred fifty feet. Five, six feet. One hundred fifty centimeters. Yes. <laughs> Isn't that tiny feet. as hell? Like, that's yeah, that's tiny. Tiny. Asian genes. Four eleven. Yeah. Four eleven. Yeah. And I'm like I'm like 184 centimeters, you know. Like we 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 beat the allegations basically. So you've had a ten to that height boot for sure. Like yeah, no, I, I, I literally just got my ID, you know, redone. It says 184 uh, yeah. straight yeah. on the. I'm Tinder sure you profile. can pay for that to yeah. yeah. five eleven. You know, you know they don't actually check it. Like you can like go go measure it and tell me the number. I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> go ahead, yeah. Bro was um, on his tiptoes. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Harry Slander, we had a challenge <laughs> last week where you had to put five words in a comment and they had to be rhyming so you guys did a great job at rhyming so let me read two of them harry you are a ginger that's one and harry, <laughs> has, right. harry has iq of grape there you go oh, great rhyming there, <laughs> they, they did great they yeah. did great rhymes but they they did the challenge they they, they had a harry slander so shout out those man guys. the yeah. fantasia listeners are true shakespeare's over the time you know yeah. iq yeah. of grape yeah. on, on there's spotify there's another one i couldn't read but yeah on, on, on spotify they had they had some as well also failed on many of the parameters, but yeah. Matthew said, "You little ginger freak, I'll full piece you." Whoa! 
<laughs> Sorry, that got a little bit nicer towards the end. I wonder what was happening. Eh? <laughs> yeah, no. Eight words? Uh, yeah. yeah, a bit over the count, but you know, did yeah. the job. I feel like this is just ways for people to get that anger out. Is there just yeah. like say, "Fuck <laughs> you"? Yeah, I don't like you. I think what you'll find though is like. These people really love you. That's the, yeah. that's the thing, you know? Yeah, like, that's the thing, right? If they were yeah. ranking their favorite people in the pod, like, you'd be high up there, you know, consistently. They it doesn't do sound like you. it. Nah, what I think they week, love you. Yeah. What if this week we just put a nice comment about Harry if you've watched yeah. until this point, you know? Just put yeah. something yeah, nice. Yeah, I think so. Let's, let's even it out. Yeah, right. let's, let's put five words of nice, gentle, loving towards Harry. Oh, loving perfect. towards, oh, okay. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Uh, and yeah, be sure to leave your comments because they might get read out next week. Uh, and you know what? I, I actually forgot this. Um, there was an episode like three weeks ago that we did, maybe even longer than that. Somebody s left a super comment. Like they paid for their comment. Yeah. They left us a tip. So if you really want your comment to be read... <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you've not read it out. What yeah, you yeah, yeah, you haven't even read it out. Just oh, no, we did. I'm pretty sure we did. I'm pretty sure we did read it out. It wasn't enough, though. It was like a dollar or something. Like, minimum yeah, 10. Yeah. Come on. No, from now on, <laughs> from, from today, if you really want your comment read, you know, yeah. wink, wink. It'll go on the screen as well. Yeah, yeah. We'll edit it on the screen as well. We'll yeah. get it nice up there. Yeah, we'll put your socials that. on there, you know, you can yeah. shout out something. Yeah, yeah, no, we'll we, get some we confetti popping when it's, yeah. you know, your comment comes on the screen. <laughs> Producer Quartz is sweating right now. He's like, what the fuck are you guys <laughs> signing up for? <laughs> um, all right, then. Yeah, no. Thank you for everyone leaving their comments. We'll read out some more next week. Uh, let's do the top five game. We got, uh, we got a top right. five game this week. Um, it's going to be... Ooh. An easier one for you guys. I hope. I say this every time, and then people panic and like fluff their lines completely. Um, so hopefully this Code week will be a lot better. If you want to play along, if I not if you want to play along, be sure to pause the video right now. Mm. Put your your guesses in the comment section below. Well, you yeah. got to ask the question before the question. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, 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 this yeah. week's uh, question. I'm, I'm, pause, yeah. I'm just, pause now, I'm just stalling. I'm just stalling for yeah, you guys because yeah. I don't know if you guys yeah. are ready yet. Okay, okay. You guys, I'm in. I'm ready. You guys I'm ready? always in. I'm always in. Okay. I'm going to screenshot my answers too. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, in case. Just in case. Hopefully you don't have to, but just in case. All right. This week's question of the week for the top five game is which Fortnite players who are still competing today have the most earnings? Which Fortnite Ooh. players who are still competing today oh, have the most on. earnings? Be sure to pause the video and comment down below your top five guess. No cheating. No cheating at all. Uh, you guys, uh, Reese, you look very, you look like you're, you're three? Really pondering there. I'm good, I, I'm good on three to start with. Right. I'm not sure. I, I'm pretty certain they're in the top oh, five. I forgot. The next two oh, I forgot this guy. Yeah. There's one that has an asterisk on there. I'm going to argue for this guy. Okay. I think I know the one you're. I, th I might be on the same one, but I think this is an easier week. I, I hope all of you guys get top uh, at least four right. Surely, I right? This. I don't remember. Surely, anybody locked yet? Are we locked? I'm locked. No. I'm locked. I forgot the screenshot. But I know okay, them. Okay. Well, I've missed two. I don't Harry, know the last. Yeah. Harry yeah. Top. Are. Harry's locked. So the timer is ticking. Up. You guys got to get your answers yeah, in quickly. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Okay. Go I got one. I got one. Go I got one. Okay. Reese. Fuck it. On my last uh, one. Oh, I think uh, my last one's wrong. Shiza. <laughs> Okay, uh, like, go on, Boomer. Um, uh, oh, that's not right. Oh, that's, I can't think of a fifth one. I can't, yeah, I can't think of my fifth one either, oh, man. God, you guys I'm pretty so confident good. in the top four. I'm just going through the World Cup leaderboard in my head. It's yeah, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Wait, you're oh, giving away answers. I helped him. Like, no, I let him no, lock in. I submit. Is everybody oh, locked? Or whatever. Is everybody I, I, locked? If I lose, yeah, I lose. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, so remember, the question was, who are the... Fortnite players with who are still competing with the most earnings. Um, all right, does everyone Harry was we'll start, first. We'll start with Harry. Harry, you're first. What was your top all right. five? All right, so obviously, number one here, Booga first, Ooh. Aqua second, Epic World third, Tayson fourth, and can we, if we include Gamers eight? Can we, if we include Ooh. Gamers eight? Interesting. Oh, okay. Are we Mission including earnings? Aqua really as like a relevant player? He, 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 play, he still he plays play. in my heart. He Aqua, still plays. Aqua I definitely have still play the game. Yeah. Oh, come Aqua, on. He plays. Play. Yeah, I was like, nah. It's, I took it's, him out. Especially now that Siphon's back, he's definitely playing. That was so, his name. Like, he's definitely yeah, coming back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, well, Reese, give us your top five then. Uh, <laughs> Hit me with I think it. I know someone who's Hit not on there, but yeah, go on. 
But yeah, so I put Booga, Tayson, Epic Whale, Kami, and then I had Thomas HD instead, who I, who I switched out. Oh, so we would have the same if you had kept Ap uh, Aqua. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay, okay. I'm not sure of the order of that, though, because mm. I... Because again, I wasn't sure about Gamers 8 and if we, how, what we were going to mm. include there. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, I uh, now pose the same for you, Mr. Boopy. What is your top five? So we're going to get very technical here because I think I'm technically correct. So I have Booga, oh, Epico, Aqua, uh. and Nas. Yeah, you know, Fortnite tournament and then Tayson. So uh, I think that's a five for five right there. Anas does not play. We're not counting him play yeah. with yeah. Zero. Nas play. literally yeah, can... played tournament He's... last week. He's, yeah, he's Check playing with Zeru, that doesn't count. He's, he's, he's there in fucking... He didn't say he has to be good? He's he's in fucking the mold. He's playing on 100 ping hey, on his hey, fucking Ronaldo yacht. It doesn't count. <laughs> Ronaldo plays in Saudi Arabia. Does he still play football? There we go. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, I'm not going to comment on that it one. it counts. Well, I will let you know, since I let you know with Aqua, Anas does count as an active player. Fuck play. Oh, come on. And so, I can now reveal, uh, I believe... None of you got five out of five. Really? <laughs> what? All right. Wait, is there, so wait, is there, is there, oh, it's there's a tie. King. We need a tiebreaker. King. Let's, okay, let's the King look. has not got that early, uh, surely. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they, well, I think all of you are going to be, I think there is a tiebreaker, but we'll, we'll figure it out in terms of the order of the placements. The top five I can reveal is, in number eight, I'll start with number eight before I get to five. In number eight, King from Argentina has 1.1 mm -hmm. 1 million in earners, almost 1.2 million. Mm -hmm. In number seven, a lot of you guys had him on your list. Tayson. Tayson has 1.2 really? million yeah, dollars worth of earnings. Is Wait. Thomas above Tayson? Who is more than Tayson? Hold on. There are players with more earnings than Tayson now in EU. And in number six, his former teammate, Thomas HD, 1.32 wow. ah, million bag. in earnings. Now, on to the top five. I've just missed Anas fucking. In number five, Kami. Kami oh, now has dude. 1.483 million ah, dollars damn. worth of earnings. Wow, that is rich. In number four, Anas. Anas has 1.6 yeah. million worth of Fortnite earnings. Yes. In number three. Thanks, Mr. Beast. Oh, thank you, Mr. Beast, indeed. In number three, <laughs> Epic Well. Epic Well, I mean, World Cup carries there, but 1.8 million in earnings in his Fortnite career. No surprises who the top two are going to be. Number two is the one and only Aqua Bring Back Siphon. $2.19 million worth of earnings. And in number one, it's one and only World Cup Booga <laughs> with three million. Wow. 3.7 million in earnings. I was going to yeah, say, yeah. well, just as you yeah. have nothing yeah, no, since no, 2018. No, no, no. But yes, 3.7 million in earnings. So, so what's I the tiebreaker? I think with that being said, if we look at all of your answers, you all had Booger in one. Mm -hmm. uh, Harry Wait, had Booger. Aqua in two. So that was correct positioning. Uh, Harry and Reese had Epic Will know. in three. So that's another correct position for that one. And then, so who was in fourth again? I can't Anas. Remember Anas. Anas. Only person that had Anas in the correct position is Boop, but Boop, you, oh, actually no, yeah, yeah, but Boop, you had Epic One, Aqua wrong. Mm -hmm. And then in fifth is Kami. Only person that had that was Harry. So essentially, so one. no, you all had four, right? <laughs> I had correct positions, Wait, no. like four of them. I've, you, all, you, had, you all had four, right? But yeah. Harry had the most correct positions. He had four out of five correct positions. So Harry there wins we this go. Respect. We'll give, we'll give Harry the yeah. win. Uh, I always win on these technicalities. It, 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 doesn't, we'll it doesn't count because we're recording on a Wednesday afternoon very early. So it's actually yeah. <laughs> taking away this time. So. And then in, Harry, Reese and Boop had two correct positionings. So, mm -hmm. but, mm -hmm. but Reese had the higher correct positioning because Epic won three versus Anderson four. That's true. That so literally boop, boop doesn't mean anything. Boop. Yeah, yeah boop it means, it means, well, let's yeah. yeah. look to the difference in earnings for the wrong person. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Who's got no, less earnings, no. Tayson or Thomas? <laughs> Um, no, what we need wait, to do shit, is wait, what that might actually backfire yeah. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what we need is one of the viewers to tally up all of the weeks so we can start a leaderboard. So we can actually start one and we can keep it going. Oh, you need a leaderboard. The of it, bud, so. I won the last two weeks. No, I think Harry would be winning if we had. Yeah, I'm no, pretty sure I'm winning re without Reese. Didn't count. It didn't count without Reese. Yeah, so I still won the last uh, two first weeks. First week I wasn't there. Last week doesn't count because I cheated. I yeah. won that oh, too. Oh my! 
Realistically, <laughs> the fact that you know this just makes you a bigger nerd, so you just lose in life. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you you go. always find a way to yeah. you loser, man, yeah. knowing this shit. Yeah. God. Always, man, always, always. Um, all right, let's uh, get into some more news-related topics because we did have some news in the world of Fortnite this week. First one is a bit adjacent to Fortnite, not directly Fortnite, um, but still something I wanted to, to, to get your guys' thoughts on. The Esports Awards is taking place soon, and we have seen the nominees for the different categories. Um, and there's a bunch of categories that I'm sure nobody will care about. But one category that did pop up was the finalists for Esports PC Player of the Year. This award, I believe, was actually won by Booga a couple years ago in 2019 when he won the World Cup. So Fortnite player has won this award before. And this year, when it when it comes to the finalists, no Peterbot to be found. A bunch of amazing players from other games. Um, I follow a couple of the games, so I recognize a bunch of the players here. Uh, I also don't recognize a bunch of them because I don't follow their yeah. games. But mm. no Peterbot in the esports PC player of the year. Mm. What did everyone make of this? Initially, I'm sort of like, clearly these people just, there's no Fortnite rep involved in this process. Like there's just- Nothing new. No, there no, there no, is no, just it, no it, Fortnite rep here. <laughs> It's good from the esports award to understand that NA is a Mickey region, so all of the placements <laughs> that really happened just didn't really count. So like a first and a second in the game of which isn't even in Fortnite, like does it really count at this point? So don't blame them to be honest. But honestly, it does suck that no Fortnite players really, and I don't think there will ever really be any Fortnite players because if you ask any other esport player or any player who plays any other competitive games what they think about Fortnite. They'll never think about the competitive scene. They'll never think it's a competitive game. They'll think it's a casual game with a bunch of battle passes and skins and whatever, and not actually about the high level and how hard it is to compete at the highest level for Fortnite. Yeah. So one of two things is true because of what you just said. Either people at the esports awards are elitist assholes and we shouldn't care about their opinions here, or they're absolute filthy casuals who don't know what they're talking about. Either way. So it can't win. Yeah. One of the two. That one hit strong for me. You can't tell them how you really feel. Well, no, it's like you can't follow. You can't be esports awards and not follow An e massive yeah. esports out there. Like, and the thing is, like, they never have any Fortnite representation, whether it's like talent side, player side, whatever it is. It's like they gave Booga the award for it, uh, and the award, but it was like, yeah, you had to be a thirty million dollar event for them to even notice it yeah. at the time. And outside of that. I don't know if any Fortnite. I mean, I'd have to check. I'm just. No. I don't think any Fortnite. I don't know if any Fortnite has ever won. been nominated or won. Nominated before the this, closest no. we've had Never. is obviously Clicks when he gets Streamer of the Year, esports yeah. Streamer of the Year, because yeah. he was nominated for that. So casual. Yeah. So you have to be a casual right, to watch right, it because right. it's like, oh, that guy's a big streamer, then he he deserves it. Or there was a massive event here that was literally thirty million dollars, and after that, we're never going to look at it again. You know, it's like they never dive into the esports world. Literally, never dives into any of the Fortnite related event for anything. So like. Everyone's picking about it this year, but this has happened every year since like 2019 for so, all things. Is this a yeah, fault imagine. of 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 them? I mean, yes, probably, right? But it's also probably a fault of like I guess Fortnite as like an esport as a whole and like the representation of Fortnite as an esport. Like we haven't been able to shed the the, the outer layer of Fortnite. Oh, that's a game where motherfuckers build towers, bro. Like, fuck those kids. Like, you know, that's that's the only thing that they, they see when they think about Fortnite as an esport. So how are we ever gonna shed that like sort of image uh, as a as an esport i don't know but we, you just watch one event yeah but like it's, it's, it, but, <laughs> but it's also yeah. hard to get into it like it's not like a, an esport you can really pick up as easy i guess but uh, it doesn't have like the long-standing history of like a league of legends or, or cs for example it's easy to pick up and watch it but realistically who gives a fuck who cares yeah, about a random true. esport yeah. award like we don't need the validation yeah. we got ourselves we got the, no, we got the fantasia awards yeah, we got the FNT. <laughs> yeah. True. The FNT I mean, awards, absolutely. Even on the esports awards from other games, I'll quickly touch on like someone like Faker, obviously the biggest League of Legends player, but his best achievement came in 2023. So he's getting an yeah. award in 2024 mm. for his best achievement in 2023. So it's like, I don't think Faker. we. Yeah, because it's yeah. fake, because his name brand and everything. Yeah. So I don't think we really need to think too much about it. And I think the bigger thing is we just need to create more and we do it a bit and I feel like as a community there is I think there was the FN comp awards they usually do, like every year right, I think right, somebody right. gun does it. Uh, SBG. Yeah, SBG. Yeah, SBG, yeah, and it's I feel like we just need to support those way more and Absolutely. we'll get the right sort of awards and people will get the respect they deserve from these sort of things and I don't think we need like an esports awards to show and like, even in other games like they do their own awards because they feel the same about the esports awards. Right? Yeah, so. I've, I've always felt weird about the esports award for that reason of just like, uh, like there is a lot of people who follow multiple games, right? But like, 
you, you know, I, I just try and imagine like just doing like, you know, when, when people do like sports awards, like it's just so hard to like compare across that many different genres mm-hmm. and, and, and be able to really quantify the moments and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I do feel like Fortnite as a whole is getting more attention from other like esports mm-hmm. and like the wider esports community as a whole. Um, like I feel like that is something that is, is a trend that's going in that direction. Um, I do agree with you guys. It, I, ultimately, like it, it, it doesn't really matter. It, it just goes to show that these people don't like. Re- they're just not locked in, right? And yeah. if these people aren't locked in, they're not locked in. Because I feel like if anybody on that panel was locked into Fortnite, Peter mm, Bot's name no. is on that list. Yeah, like, I nearly yeah. did the golden road, basically, of winning every single event possible. If, His if, average placement over the whole year, over the six finals, is 1.6. So mental, yeah. <laughs> I, I wonder if there was any overlap in, like, viewership for the RSCS and Global Championships, right? Because they hosted in the same arena. I'm sure they must have done, like, a bundle deal that you could watch both. I wonder if that actually converted any fans because like that's how most people get into esports like oh this esports kind of similar to the other one let me just check it out or that's going on on this week and let me check it out real quick so i wonder I if, if we are heading there <laughs> like, did you never watch it before that no i've never watched rlcs but i did watch rlcs uh a, a couple of the games it was mad fun it's just rocket league yeah. just so easy to understand that is the difference it's much yeah. easier in like a rocket league or even a first person shooter to see oh who's the best player oh it's the guy with the yeah. most kills on the best team right in fortnite it's you can't do the same thing with peter Bolt, right but actually watching a game of fortnite is a lot hard if you don't understand the ins and outs of it to be honest mm-hmm. like an yeah. end game is the hardest thing i think any casual could ever watch in if you, if you have no experience yeah if, of you, if you have no experience yeah, yeah it'd be i mean mental. that's where we go reload now bro it's the future true true i guess so i guess maybe it is yeah. um well i mean speaking of reload we got reload ranked now eh? Reload yes ranked. yes yeah. what we've all well, needed thank god guys <laughs> thank god Come on, you know, more a, reload a... tournaments with awesome formats, which really are skillful and you oh. don't need perfect tournaments. Let's go. So I really feel like there was like a gaping hole in the Fortnite community. Oh. And I think ranked reloads just tick that box yeah. entirely. Yeah, yeah, honestly. Filled that hole right up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, we, we, we've been, we've been missing, you know, some OG points format. There, there, there's no reason why we've developed the points format over five years so that the games can be, you know, the taunts can be more competitive. How about we just go backwards five years and have yeah. killed yeah, <laughs> and mean you have to get 12 kills, four kills, or eight kills to get any points for elims. How about make it so, you know, you just actually just have to have the perfect format with elo bugs in the tournaments and yeah. it's just awesome. It's just awesome, guys. So for for this okay so this uh, reload ranked is is it, it doesn't make sense to me right because okay it does and it doesn't make sense to me because if you think about it reload is a game mode i think that is very very catered towards casuals so what do casual people want they want to play against people that are shit and they want to shit on shitty people right so i guess ranked accomplishes that in one hand but one of the things that i think one of the major criticisms people have had about reload and when you play reload a lot you'll notice this is that like the first three or four games that you play a reload absolute stinkers they have no hands they got no fingers they got no toes but then once you win a game or you win two games of reload all of a sudden the people you play against are fucking sweaty as hell right like they're very good players they can actually build their edit and stuff so maybe this is a move to like take away sbmm in regular reload or something so that the ultra casuals have an environment to have fun in but then you have to realize do comp players actually give a shit about the reload rank no like the, no one actually cares about that part so yeah, they're, they're creating a game mode for people that most of them only play it as like a, a fun little warmer. They don't really enjoy it that much in a competitive game mode. And then the casuals aren't going to play it either. So it just ends up kind of splitting the player base uh, in, in two. So it doesn't really make sense to me. My prediction is this is some sort of like, you know, the, the setting up for like a reload OG FNCS next season. That's my wild prediction for it. But I, I don't think it makes much sense to, to make a reload rank from this. I was going to say, is this not just a setup for we're doing more reload tournaments? So we want to create that same yes. pipeline that we yeah. have with yeah. regular ranked and BR into tournaments. Like, you need yes. to be this ranked requirement to play in yeah. this tournament, you know? Like, yeah. Yeah. this just so I, seems like that. So. As much as I did just hate, like hate on it, but I think my hate morely comes down to the format of like how like it feels playing the tournaments and how the points format works. I generally don't actually hate the game mode as much. Right, and I, yeah. I feel like when you look at the player base that actually plays it, even before ranked came out, it was still getting near a hundred thousand players playing it, combined between build and zero build, which is an insane amount of players. And to get rid of the sweaty players out of the the pubs, put them into the ranked mode, so the casuals can have fun playing pubs. 
and the sweaty players can have fun, you know, playing ranked, I think is fine. And I don't have a problem with Epic adding new ways to play tournaments. I think having one tournament a week, which is a different style of tournament, whether it's reload or something else, is fine. I think in a season like this is fine, and maybe an OG season I'd also think it's fine, right? My biggest problem is, one, in this season, the major well, for most players, half of the tournaments are reload. You have two reload tournaments, a solo mm -hmm. cash cup and a duo cash cup. Two, the format sucks, so it's actually impossible to qual or do anything. It feels like you, you play a whole end game, you get fifth, it's like, yeah, what a game. You load out five <laughs> points, and you're just like, what, what was the point of actually <laughs> mm -hmm. playing that game? And then... On top of that, I feel like there's a lot of bugs with it at the moment when it comes to ELO and what it sounds like. I saw something on Twitter where the, your first game's matchmaking is based on your pub matchmaking. So what's happening is play, uh, pro players are getting into games with pro players in their first game. and then But the worst players are getting the same first game in the tournament with the worst players because it's based on their pub matchmaking. Uh, that's why there was mm. that screenshot of like... Yeah. The, like 16 pros in one game yep. and it was like how is first game of the tournament yeah like, what that's how it, that's how it's happening right so mm. I, I i generally think like reload rank i don't really have a problem with it it's like whatever it's adding something and if like we look at the player count right now i'm gonna assume it's probably the same if not more it's yeah of course just put it in it's on 200 it's the highest played yeah 205 right now yeah that so up? it's on the so, it's new as well but yeah it's know. new but it still will be like if it uh, dies now it'll be slightly less but at the end of the day, right, for most players, even for, like, sweaty Battle Royale players, would you rather land at your landing spot, kill a team off spawn, and then there'd be 10 players alive and you have to sprint across the map to find anyone? Or if you're a sweaty player who wants to fight, play Reload, where you can fight people constantly and get better practice. And I, I feel like for most players, they're going to play Reload. And I feel like it has a spot. I just feel like the way they've done the tournaments is so bad, it's left a sour taste in everyone's mouth. I feel like it's not better practice at all, because... The, the, at the more minute, fun. I'm kind of like fun. a split decision. It is more fun, but like right now, if I want to practice battle royale, I'll play ranked because now, after yesterday, they you know changed the loophole yeah, yeah. back to the comp loophole. Let's go, amazing. Mm -hmm. But if I go into uh, reload, I'm like, I just rather play build fights or something rather than playing this for sure. the most part. I feel like I feel like or or any creative map where it's like a one v one. I find like those scenarios are so much more useful than playing reload, especially when you don't have like bullet drop off and not relevant uh, like loot. That doesn't mean it's not fun just to sit and play. But if I actually just physically want to sit and improve, like reload isn't the place for that. Yeah, right? fair, fair enough. But I mean, I I just think it's like one of those things that like as, hopefully they take some of the criticism of the tournaments this season. I think yeah, with format and everything, because playing the reload cups. As a player who's probably not going to qualify to them, even if it has a good format, they're still they're still somewhat fun to play. I still enjoy playing the mm -hmm. reload cups. I it is it is enjoyable, and I feel like the heal off isn't as bad as it seems. It's still heal off, obviously, but it's nowhere near as bad as people perceive. And yeah, I, in general, I think they're fun tournaments to play. I just think I don't want to I don't want it to just Fortnite becomes reload. And we had that talk when it first came out, right? There, it's like what's stopping them from just changing everything to just be reload. Well, right. I think it's very clear that they want Reload to succeed in being like a secondary, well, not not even a secondary track, just because again, like they're not like canceling Zero Build, you know, Zero Build still exists, yeah. but they very clearly want Reload to be on that level of Zero Build, if not more, like the actual <laughs> second track, right? And then, yeah. you know, Zero Build becomes tertiary or whatever. Um, and like, I know Epic want feedback on uh reload to make it better so i pose yeah. you this question like what would you guys do to make it better right now um number one get rid of squads no, right yeah, yeah I, I agree um just so i'm gonna go on a slight side tangent before i answer this right so the we play squads me the first week me 11 uh dj and mini minor played the first week right miserable least it was fun i've ever horrific. had playing fortnite in my I mean, life it's because of the team remember that sentence remember that sentence right so uh, you know, Levin was away, Minnie was away this week, so we played with two other people. We did pretty good. We were like top three hundred or something like that. We won like four four games. I wonder why. It. And yeah. and I look at I looked on Twitter the next day and I saw DJ being like, you know what? You know, this reload tournaments have a lot of potential. They're actually really fun. And I was like, I think I remember two weeks ago when we were playing with Levin, you said this is one of the worst tournaments we've ever played of all time. Right, I'm, I'm gonna button quickly. So, is this what I'm looking for forward to in trios? <laughs> that now Levin and Mini, you play with Levin and Mini and you have the least enjoyable spirit experience of your life. So that when you don't play with them, you have fun. Is this what uh, I'm looking forward to in trios? Yes. I, it does potentially, yes. I can't comment that. Uh, I would never make such a statement myself. 
Um, so, yeah, I think it's one of those tournaments that if you're playing squads in particular, if you're doing well, it's fun. If you're not, it's awful. And that's kind of reload generally. I even found that with pubs, if you're just dying out the sky, I found the game mode very annoying. If you don't have loot, it's frustrating. But if you're doing good, then it's fun. So the reason I say no to squads in that is like with OG mobility, when you got shockwaves, you have all this other stuff, it's like the there's not an interesting dynamic to the game mode at all. It's like you go center zones, moving zone starts, you shockwave or crash pad or whatever, you just tarp for the rest of the game and then you play off. Like mm -hmm. that is literally yep. the entire way you play the game right now. And now obviously they want to make changes to that. But if you're going to keep like OG fun items and you're going to have like shockwaves and you're going to have all this old school mobility items, that's still going to happen because squads, you just got so many mats and the zones just are relatively short. With duos, I've not actually played the duos one yet, but it's you're just you just have way less materials. You have literally 50% of the mats. So it's way less of an issue in terms of just like how stupidly you know, stupid the games are basically for yeah. that. So. So I'll, yeah. I'll just go quick say because I played the duo like this weekend was the mm -hmm. first reload taunts I'd played because I didn't play the other weeks. The duo one definitely more enjoyable playing end games. Uh, Twenty times yeah. more enjoyable. You I actually feel like you have to you have you have to do something. You don't you can't like I think Reese me and you had the very same experience playing the squad cup. I actually could have just AFK'd in all the end games, just dropped all my mats, and nothing would have changed. You have your tarp. I did actually yeah. do that in one game. Yeah, it's literally I, uh... like you just drop your mats, your tarp are full top, so three of you sit there clapping hands together, and then you get to heal off. Like, nothing happens. I will have you know, I'll have you know, I had the second highest kills and the second highest damage ratio, though. Oh, well then. So, well, so, well so, done, so I, I was not doing yes. nothing. Yeah. I was what you call playing pump out. Yeah, pump well, out. I was just looking. <laughs> Other people were editing, but they yeah. weren't doing anything because they were just tarping doing it. But, but yes, you're but yeah, you then, can just play AFK. But the one thing in du duos, I'd say, tr dying in duos and having to recover the game, nothing is more miserable. Because <laughs> you landed, every split's taken, every everything's taken. You land, you have your grey AR, and that is it. You're getting chased by a duo across the map because they've seen you rifted. And you just get the amount of times that I die in first zone and I'm just getting chain killed repeatedly because wherever you fly, there's shockwave, grapple, crash pad, just chasing mm -hmm. you down. And it's like, well, what do I do? What do I do at this point? It's just pointless. Um, yeah. But I def I definitely think duos or trios is the way to go with it. I think I think squads is miserable to play. It is, it's fun to play, but it's like, it's so brain numbing. You don't have to do anything. As long as you make it off spawn and you just... As you said, go center. You can go center fifth zone. That puts you in every single zone until fifty fifty. You shockwave to fifty fifty. Shockwave first moving, and then tap the rest of the game. And you, it's, it's easy. The only way you die mm -hmm. is if in squads, like I, I always happens in squads. One player's just like, I've got a play on me, and then it's just like they just die by themselves. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think biggest change: change the game mode. May, I think only one tournament a week. I feel like having two tournaments makes it feel like there's too much. You know, it's one of those things that less is more sort of thing. Good. Right, mm. and the other thing I still believe in: make the last moving go on forever. Make it so that there's no heal off. Make it just like I think Barla said this ages ago about Fortnite back in trios when it used to. The, we used to have the problem with heal off is like just make the last moving zone get to like a certain size, but it's like a one tile size, and it just goes on forever until the players die. So it means that the I'm game, gonna... the games don't go into heal off. I'm gonna interrupt you before Levin does. Levin's about to say. You know, I remember speaking to this Epic employee years ago, and he told me why this wouldn't work. I can't remember what the answer was, but it just trust me, it wouldn't work. Okay, okay. But yeah, I, I, I then... recently rehad this conversation with a different <laughs> Epic employee, uh, yeah. and right, I only remember one of the reasons. <laughs> I've forgotten well... the reason, but the, one of the reasons is it's something to do with like, just like servers. Like if you if you just had like a million servers, just just like going on forever. Do you know what I mean? Maybe so. Maybe uh, they could yeah, just do it in like only tournament servers, but even then, like you could yeah. just have problems where like if just all the serve because you you know like you'd imagine if they did this like like comp wise and like they did it with yeah. ranks like you know there'd just be kids like yeah. I stayed in the longest Fortnite game ever and it's like, this, uh, like yeah. just maybe maybe not forever. Make server, it like a know? three minute moving zone or something. So like it's not forever. So, right, but right, it's right. Like, it's longer. Yeah, like, I I, I yeah. could I I could see that 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 would and I that, think makes a lot of sense. And then the biggest thing, which there is a problem with like the format, which it, like you want to make it so it's the normal format, right? So placement actually feels somewhat re rewarding. You don't get a fifth and you might as well have not played the game. But on the other hand is you have to do, you have to have a kill cap because if you don't have a kill cap on top of that, right? And you, you have it so any kills, teams are actually dropping a hundred bombs. They're unironically just going <laughs> to leave one player alive, chase them around the map and just constantly get like 60, 70 kills a game. 
So I think maybe a kill cap, maybe like if they want to keep the 12 kills, that's fine. 12 kill cap is fine, but one point a kill and then normal placement format. So it doesn't feel like so weird playing the taunts. It's like you have to get a certain amount of kills. You need to, I'm on, I'm on 11 kills. Need to get that 12 kill or I'm missing out on a point. Like it just, it feels really weird. Yeah, so, it's a weird balance of strike. Oh, sorry, but you go. No, so, uh, so one of my issues I have for so I, I haven't played any of the Velo tournaments for for reference. So from from like a viewer perspective, is like the reason why we enjoy battle royale is because there's there's a nice storyline, right? You have the Osborn fights in normal battle royale game. You have the mid game in stacked lobbies where it's about surge and suppression of getting surge and the rotations, and then you get the final payoff is five minutes of pure bliss and end game. In Velo, you got. 10 to 12 minutes of just bullshit because people are respawning. It doesn't really matter that much. And then when you finally get to that payoff moment in the end game, it's two minutes of, uh, he's his own and the game is done, right? So like, that's one of my, one of my qualms with it is like, there's no actual satisfying payoff. So I think like you said, like the, the infinite moving zone or having some sort of rework to the final moving zones would make it a lot. But at that point, we're pretty much making reload akin to just like a battle royale like uh copy right it's basically lake and marina at that point so that's one of my issues like, i think in order to change reload to make it a viable game or to enjoy or to watch you're basically trying to emulate lake and marina basically and then it's not even reload anymore uh you that's, have something in yeah we should just do that that yeah. sounds way better yeah i was gonna say who says yeah, no to lake game marina i think i think that is probably the problem that epic either having or will have is that a lot of the suggestions that get made are just things that make reload just VR. Yeah. 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 And then mm -hmm. it's like, all right, then and I know a lot of us just like reason how you just did that would be like, yeah, I wouldn't <laughs> mind that mate. Yeah, 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 yeah that's it's fine. fine. Let's yeah, go late game arena, baby. It was um, innovation, man. But like from an epic POV it's an, then like you, you know, you're almost like stepping on what VR is. Um in, in many ways, like, then, if anything, BR would probably be more at risk of, like, just being taken over by Reload, because it's like, oh, it's just fast pace, it's easy, so hard, uh, uh, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, I feel like Reload, I feel like with anything that they make it to competitive mode, you want the mode to keep its identity. Um, zero build yeah. is zero build, and zero build can't be BR, and that's fine. Um, and I think Ray mode, like, very much, you, you, they probably want the same for Reload, where, like, Reload is Reload, it feels like Reload, and we this works in a competitive environment that is separate from what BR is, um, and how they balance that, I'm not sure. I'm I'm still thinking about reload and like how I think things need to go with it. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a bit lost on it. I, I don't See, really to, know what you do. To, to me, it. I don't think it is that complicated. I generally just think it is just make the make it so the end games don't go to as much heal off. Make it so they feel a little bit better to play. So last moving. Make the tournament format better. I feel 90% of the players would be fine with that, you know. Obviously, it's going to have the mm. reload quirks. So it's like, oh, yeah, you're getting chain killed or you're just having such a scuff game or in the mid game, you don't have to do a lot, right? But at the end of the day, there is somewhat of like a risk reward behind keying people because you can scuff your games. So if people don't want to key people. That, that's fine. That happens in Fortnite. You know, obviously, there's surge, which matters. And there is surge and reload. Like, it doesn't happen often, but there is surge and reload. So you still have mm, to manage that. Them. Yeah, so there is you still have to manage that sort of stuff. So I just think a, a fix to the end game and a better tournament format, and I feel a lot of people would be and and no squads as well, no squads as well. But yeah, I think a lot of people would just be much much happier with that because actually playing it feels good for for the most part. It's just yeah, it's just end games just feel a little bit lackluster, as you said. Yeah, I also think if you die, you should get you should respawn with an AR and a gray pump because I know the reason they don't want yeah. that is because they don't want people just dive bombing on people's heads with like. AR shotgun, uh, dying until it over and over again, and just like keep chain killing people. Yeah. Uh, but maybe I, if I die, no, I want a shotgun, mate. Like, yeah. give me a shotgun when I spawn. Like, the the it's so hard to find a shotgun sometimes if you've died and respawned that it's like then if you get keyed, then you are just giving such free points to other teams. You know, I have no way to fight back, but there's a gray AR whatsoever. Um, and I think maybe, you know, for the pub mode or whatever, you keep it so that it's just the AR, that's fine. But like for tournaments, I want to be spawning in with a pump. Like just, just give me one as well. Yeah. Like it's, it's, I have so much higher chance of surviving then. 
So someone had a good, a decent suggestion, like maybe linking respawn to some sort of negativity. Like if you are forced to respawn, you lose points or something like that. I think stuff like that could be interesting to like make respawning something like worthwhile, right? Because like now you don't really care to like really play your life, right? In Battleground, you care to play your life. In this, you're just like, oh, I'm dead. Okay, let me respawn again. So linking yeah. it to like maybe some sort of gold total, some sort of objective to mm. be able to respawn your teammates. Something like that would be interesting. Something that Call of Duty also did on, on the other uh, map. I don't really sure. I'm not fully really sure what yeah. it was, but you have to like collect go to reboot your teammates pretty much but not reboot in that sense but like there has to be some sort of negativity to actually yeah. reloading your teammates i think would be interesting i mean i think the, the idea that if you get a kill you gain a point if you die you lose a point yeah that's it uh, like good and good then, luck coding that shit because we hit yeah 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 i mean i would say it would be hard but i don't i'm sure it would yeah. be but like i mean coding issues aside like then there's a risk to like say because right now say they remove the the elim cap Everyone lands tilted, and it's just like, okay, we need someone to survive and get loot. Everyone else is going to 50-50 kids flying out of the sky, you know, land on each other, the ARs, just keep racking up elims over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, and there's no negative to dying. You're just getting points for getting elims. Yeah. So, like, you would gain infinite, but if at least you were losing a point every time you died, you'd be like, okay, I can't just chain 50-50 me and one other team who's just dying over and over again. Because, yeah. like, that way, th th like, there's no downside to teaming, essentially, that way. It would make me games a little bit more stacked and more meaningful, too. One, one of I mean, the, the things... games are stacked. I, I feel like... They are very stacked, they? yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the mid-game is kind stacked, of dead yeah. from what I've seen sometimes, but I haven't watched in a little while. But it's just 40 player it's, in a... It, yeah, yeah. It's, it, it's only dead because the zones just move in slowly yeah. like this, and it's like, if you get center early enough, you're fine. It's just, there's a lot of people alive, there's just not much action. action yeah. That's the so maybe, problem. like, you have yeah. to make zones move a little bit further then to make it worthwhile. So one of, one of the other things that, that Harry mentioned I thought was a good point, it's... I think an over discussion as well. I had this opinion when Lake Game Arena was around. I just think there's too much fucking tournaments right now too. Like there's there's tournaments six days a week currently, and you don't really have off days. Like it's all the tournaments don't feel as meaningful anymore. Obviously now that we're in off season, Castrillo's got announced. We're all looking forward to the future, but like low key, like <clears throat> there's just too much going on. And like some people might argue, yeah, boop, you can just skip a tournament. But like the little kids aren't gonna skip a tournament. They're gonna play every single tournament. They're gonna eat dinner at their desk and not see their parents for the next three months because they think they're gonna become a Fortnite pro. Like I, I think they need to find the tournaments that work for them, that are meaningful, mm -hmm. stick to them, and then have them nicely spread out. Because like you said, squads and duos together doesn't make sense. Just keep it to one and have like a few days that people can have off, a few days that people can scrim or do anything else. Cause there's just too much shit going on that makes tournaments just you just feel more burnt out i think after a season i think yeah, the main bias. problem is maybe i i think <laughs> i don't think that's actually a general wide problem i think it's actually at the highest level no. i think there's an oversaturation of the highest level of fortnite players playing um and because that's typically what a lot of us are watching right i think having like tournaments and offerings to play consistently is like mm -hmm. fine i just don't think we should all be watching it all <laughs> this is really yeah. where I'm at, you know? It's like watching, I, I think it has negative implications on so many levels, but I think watching the best Fortnite players in the world play every single day is just not good. Like for like the general, um, for one, in terms of like general, like excitement building towards like, you know, building narratives and stories, um, actually making tournaments feel important, right? Like you just said, Debbie, like a lot of these tournaments now just feel less important because they just happen so consistently. There's no continuity between them. Um, and I'm talking more from like a viewer perspective. I'm sure there'd be players who go, F you, Levin, I want to play every day and make as much money as possible, mm -hmm. right? But like um, having more important tournaments, like, and just like not as often uh, to me is like fine. I, I just think like, there's like, there's an oversaturation of watching the best Fortnite players play. It's, it's part, one of the reasons why like, again, this this will never change and can't change, I don't think. But like, even the fact that we just watch scrim, like when there's no tournaments, we're just there watching scrims of the best players all the time. It's like, Again, we, we're just watching too much. I thought it was so cool um, with EWC, how like we hadn't seen anything until the actual EWC land. Um, and like that was the most important, like everything, even if you did see anything before that, had, had you watched a scrim or people randomly pugging or whatever, it was all about watching the land and the matches that happened in that important tournament. And I think having, uh, an ecosystem at the top level. I'm not saying, you know, for people like us who play tournaments, but I'm saying at the top level, like the best players, I'd love them to have something that they're in, that they're playing, that, you know, is rewarding, but it's we, we're not constantly watching it and seeing it. Um, like, you know, the, there's actual, like, good tournaments to to watch and get excited for that aren't just every single day, because I, I, I don't know. I feel like it's oversaturated right now. Mm -hmm. 
I also think from a player perspective, that's not really oversaturated. As you as you mentioned, it's really I don't know why I look like I'm Jesus right now, a little white light. <laughs> but um, I I think from a, a average player perspective, it's definitely not oversaturated, right? Because if you think I play the solo cash cup on Monday, I played Middle East, so I don't have any PR for FNCS last season, so I don't play for Eval on Tuesday. I play Cash Cup on Wednesday, but I don't call the finals, so therefore I don't play on Thursday. Friday's reload, I don't really care that much about it. Saturday, there's a day off, and Sunday's another reload cup where I'm not really that fussed either. I'll play them just for fun. So it's like, for a lot of average players, you're really getting two tournaments a week that you care about, which is Solo Cash Cup and Dual Cash Cup, yeah. and then two reload cups where you're like, maybe I care about these, maybe I don't. You know, and I think that's maybe fine. Maybe don't put as much effort into yeah. them. So I think that's actually like a a very good balance at the minute. Right. I, do, I wouldn't say there's too much. I do agree, though. If you're a top player, maybe you're just playing too much, but I don't know. Be a pro. Come on. No, but it's, uh, for me, I don't even think it's a problem. I think, yeah. weirdly, I, I don't think what, what the pros think is important. Here. And I think it's more so like... I agree, well, yeah. you Because cause Boop is obviously talking from the POV of someone who like... Yes, watches it, yeah. Yeah, you watch it because right, your viewing point and everything. And I think from a viewing point, and I'm, and I'm not trying to take money out of your pockets because I know obviously the more hey, streams, hey, technically, hey, the hey. better. <laughs> Right, obviously, it's better for a viewing party streamer if you're, you know, there's things every day. But at the same time, I do feel like it's just oversaturated. If we had less of like the most important things to watch, those important things would feel valuable. It's one of the mm -hmm. big reasons why, like in football years ago, when they uh, tried to like introduce the European Super League, right, where they were like, we're gonna have like Real Madrid and Man United and all those teams playing against each other every bloody week. Now it's gonna be fucking sick. A lot of football fans ended up going, oh, 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 oh hold on a minute. Mm -hmm. I don't fucking want that. Yeah, like I, I, yeah. I, you know, I enjoy big European nights because they don't come around very often. Makes um, it feel special. Yeah, and I'm not saying Fortnite should get to that point where it's that rare where we don't see the best players playing. You know, maybe uh, once a month. I'm not saying that, but I do feel like we we watch the best players play Fortnite too much, more than any other esport by yeah. far, yeah. like by so far. Um, and I think that has implications in terms of how the tournaments are feel that important storylines just become like homogenized and like smushed and aren't as like you know prominent and, and important um and people get yeah oversaturated as a whole so no for sure so less tournaments and reloads all right if they fix something not even less to you wouldn't even maybe that have to do less tournaments yeah no i don't i don't even think you'd have to do less <laughs> tournaments even if it was just something where it's like you take the best players uh out of the pool of people playing these tournaments and you just give them something better but it's not as like you know regular you know yeah i i, I guess i mean if you if you're talking maybe from an fncs yes, perspective didn't they used to do this in trios no like it's in where it's like the best teams who qualified got to basically did they skip the whole fncs or were they already qualified to grants like was it, it, it there was a period where it was straight to yeah. grants yeah it was straight to grants so i guess that that, that happened before but I, I do agree that like it feels weird that you could you don't have to do i'll speak from a coaching perspective you don't have to do a lot to be able to scout a team right and to be able to know what they're going to do because at the right. end of the day they either showing it in practice or they're showing it in tournaments or they're showing it in whatever like at the end of the day it's people will hide strats but um, we talked about it before it's like but you're gonna have to practice it somewhere like, you're gonna have to practice it at some point right and it just makes it such a weird thing that it's like you can't really hide a lot of things and you can't really test new things or like have new things to practice or specifically for tournaments right so yeah it's it's a weird like fortnite is in a good spot i think for, as we talked okay. about for esports mm -hmm. but i think um the tournaments feeling lackluster like how many times do we talk about in during this podcast where it's been like oh these teams won the duo cash cup Okay, on to the next point. Like yeah. back in the day, <laughs> if someone wanted to do a cash cup, we'd be talking about it for hours and be like, "Oh, what do they do? Do they do any cool?" Like, no right. one cares. We had CZB Nathan, um, Vico Flixy, Vanny Exquisite, and Teeny Chap running the cash cups for like two seasons in a row, and yeah. no one really cared. Yeah. <laughs> All three of them were just top three in every yeah. single cash cup, and no one gave a crap. N no, no one uh, cared. But, but yeah, and it, but yeah, I think that's a bit of a tangent. But for reload, I think reload's fine. I think maybe the I'm ranked will be fine in my opinion, but I think when it comes to like end games and the format, that just needs a huge change. And maybe having too many reload tournaments. Yeah. Um, all right. Last big news point that I think everybody was super excited about uh, that we had yesterday, of course, at Globals, Zekamus Prime himself announced that there would be some siphon trials, and they finally dropped an explainer for the siphon trials. They actually brought the siphon trials 
uh, to us, and we had them yesterday in uh, the Eva, I believe it was yesterday yep. that, that that was on. Um, I saw you were watching it, Boop. Yep. Well, I guess let's talk about the actual siphon trials and and what they are, and and some of the the siphons, the different siphons that we we know we're gonna have. Essentially, the siphon trials are them testing different versions of siphon. Um, you know, in basically essentially means that we might not necessarily when we get Siphon back fully, if we get it back fully, because technically they might still be like, no, we don't want Siphon after all of this, right? Yeah. Um, but it, it won't necessarily be the exact same Siphon we once had back in the day. Um, each week, they'll be testing a different one. So for week one, they are testing 40 effective health. For week two, they're testing 50 effective health, which is the original one that we are all used to. For week three, they're testing 25 effective health. For week four, 75 health over time, but you don't get shields. Week five, they're testing 50 health, no shields. And then week six, they're testing 25 health and 25 shield as the siphon you get when you eliminate somebody. What does everyone make of the siphon trials? I'm a fan. I, I, I'm happy. I, I was worried they were going to do it like the reload siphon, where it's like you get two minis and that was going to be your <laughs> siphon. But um, no, it's good. And I'm, I'm happy they're testing new things out because clearly from the way it sounds is epic don't really like the way Siphon was. Maybe they felt it was too strong. Cause most of these are weaker versions of Siphon, right? Or very slight changes to it, right? And it's it's cool. It's cool. I I have no problem. And I think we talked about it a lot where I have no problem with Epic trying things out. You know, it's, it's a nice thing to see Epic testing things and not just going, no, we're never doing it ever again. It's nice to see that they're going, okay, you know what? Maybe it can work. We'll test it out. We'll see which one we like, which ones we don't. And we'll go forward with it. And yeah, it's good. It's one hundred percent good. Yeah, I think that's that's a big thing that we've never really had good communication from Epic on something where they're like, "Let's try this shit. Here you go. This yeah. is what we're gonna do. Yeah. We're gonna try it. If it works, we choose the best option, wherever that may be." Uh, so that alone, even forgetting all of the options, forgetting what there is, forgetting the fact that they're siphoned, yeah. the fact that they're actually sitting and and giving us communication on something they want to try and to test is amazing i think that's so so good to start with yeah. the options i think they're missing one major one and i know they're why they're missing it but uh it's essentially 50 effective health which if you don't know effective health as as, as i mentioned that as you know just shield or white hp essentially so just 50 overall but over time so like mm. you know like a slurp effect that is effective hp so for 50 i think that after like the 50 hp version i think that one actually makes the most sense to be like mm, maybe that's when i would want second rather than having uh over time for white health only or shield and white health i can't remember which ones they have there uh i think but yeah they can, kind of the 75 the hp and white over time yeah 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 so i'd like to be effective hp mm. over time rather than just whites uh but they don't have the tech for that apparently right now oh so <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. Uh, I actually wonder how it'll feel because when I was playing ranked, uh, once it actually worked, it was implemented. The forty siphon, it was actually kind of hard to notice it sometimes. Maybe it's just maybe I just like wasn't aware, or maybe I was just yeah. dying every game and not actually getting any kills. Yeah. Um, but I was just like, I always wasn't noticing that I was getting siphon, which was strange. Maybe it's just something to start thinking about. It's not like it isn't meaningful because forty HP is massive, but um. Yeah, I don't know. I just wasn't noticing Epic that. Epic successfully brainwashed us into thinking Siphon no, isn't did. useful. Yeah, low low know, key, though, I was watching EVA Cup yesterday. I was like, man, chat, do you guys notice a difference in this tournament watching it with Siphon? And I'm like, no, not mm. really, no. Like, that, nah. you, don't, you don't see the impact of it. Like, there was a few moments in finals where it definitely made a difference. There was like, uh, I mean, there was a moment where someone was popping a med kit, they got a Siphon kill, and then they canceled their med kit. So it's actually a mm. negative thing that Siphon was in the game there. But there was other moments where we had solo clutches that potentially might have won the game. We saw a game that was won because of Siphon because they were able to get the elimination and pop the make it in time because their HP were there. Like, I think Siphon itself is, um, yeah, it's it's a weird one because you don't, it's very hard to see it unless you're actually playing. And some of the pros in my chat, like Venno and Revsko were there. And like, yeah, it makes a huge difference to play yourself because I can go for loot and storm yes. now. I can go for more plays in storm. I can get the refresh that I want. So in that sense, it is very effective. Um, like you said, it's a very good thing now that Epic is now kind of canvassing and trying to make things happen, right? Like we're, we're seeing a massive shift. And one of the things that a lot of people didn't notice, and I think you tweeted out yesterday, Reese, maybe you didn't notice it either until after your video, is that, hey, we made ranked loot pools the same as competitive loot pools mm. now as well, right? Yes. So now we have this massive shift now of like, hey, we're finally noticing, you know what? 
fuck the pubs to rank to tournament transition let's <laughs> actually make these two things coincide with each other make them one-to-one -one, and now we're going to focus on it you know we've had massive changes in the last year with blast taking over commercial rights for fncs making more sponsorship in the actual blog post itself they said we'll make a choice based on what's the most competitive and an interesting word that they used is what's most exciting and that's, I think, very, very mm. telling of what the direction is of what they want to go for. Is like, how do we make Fortnite esports very more, much more exciting to watch and make it much more approachable for casual audiences as well? So I think they're the definitely, product. yeah, like they're focusing on the product now. And if you can see why, like, if you can see the shift now, and people are very easy to say, like, oh my God, just add 55 siphon, you fucking losers. Like, what are hmm. you doing? Yeah. Like, if you can see, like, hey, we're legitimately trying, and they still have battles internally that they have to fight in order to get to the direction that we want to, then you're just stupid. Like, you, you can tell that clearly, like, there's a massive shift that happened at some point in the last year to where Epic's like, okay, let's lock in a competitive, let's make things happen. And uh, <laughs> I think it's really exciting because, you know, we, we've all had whispers of other things happening in the background as well, potentially. Like, there's a lot that's going to happen for Fortnite comp. And I think uh, this is, like, confirmation to the general audiences, not those that are in the know, that, hey, shit's going to happen. It's a good thing. So I'm excited. Mm, yeah. Well, I mean, there's only one bad thing about the siphon. So we have a siphon coin in the game as well. So when you get a kill <laughs> with the siphon and 90. the siphon coin, you get you get 90 health or shield. Really? Oh damn! Yeah, it's yeah. crazy. So you can be tw you can be one HP in the box, kill a duo, and you're just full HP again straight away. Jeez. Well, I so mean, that might need to be adjusted. Maybe maybe change the coin potentially. I think that might well, be good over these six trials. Six weeks if, though. To I, be fair. I mean, yeah, six weeks. I uh, mean, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think they should. I, I, to, the reality is, if they brought back siphon, we'd never get siphon coins. So no, yeah, you know, yeah. it almost doesn't really matter for them to change it. So yeah, have it in for six weeks, you guys. Um, all right then. In terms of more things on siphon. Um. Yeah, it's good in it. I think one thing yeah. that's uh, yeah. important to mention is that it's interesting that we're talking about it from like a viewer perspective and things, but like the only time Siphon's good from a viewer perspective really is those solo clutches, clutches yeah. right at the end. But from a player's perspective, you know, there's so many different parts of the game which are so much more satisfying or maybe not satisfying is the right word but less frustrating is probably the best way to word it and in particular i think we'll see this more in the solo cash cup on monday when you play that because it's like third parties in fights are everything in solo cash cup and yep. you can just if the, if you see a team fight you just wait for them to finish the fight and you know that guy's gonna be 100 hp maybe 150 if he's a really good fighter and he's managed to not take minimum damage <laughs> but finishing a fight usually you get tagged like 100 or something unless you're absolutely the goat so you just sit and wait, wait for him, third party and push in, you get a free kill. Now with like you know, 40, 50, however much siphon it's going to be, it's like you immediately have that HP back. And now it's like, okay, I, if I'm going to third party fight, I actually have to think about this. I have to time my shit well. I don't just sit and wait and just be an absolute rat for this fight mm -hmm. to end and then just push in. So you know? funny enough, the uh, the third partying situation is actually interesting because you'd think the opposite would happen in terms of Eval Cup yesterday. Like you'd think that less mm. people are more prone to third partying in fights, but if anything, the games were more aggressive. People were just jumping to boxes more. People were trying to fight mm -hmm. a lot more. So interesting enough, like it's the opposite in terms of duos. Like people are trying to, you know, just they know that they can't really get third party this hard anymore. So they go for fights and they go for third parties. But one of the things I'm actually really excited about is when they do transfer over to the 50 Siphon on Monday, I'm assuming for next Monday, for Solo Cash Cup, with Siphon Coin, that's 100 shield per elimination you're getting. Someone's dropping a 40 kill win in Solo Cash Cup. Like, we could we could mm. be in, like, kill record territory. I really hope we have some Ooh. people notice that and be like, oh, shit, the race is on, you know? Like, who can drop a big one? Uh, but I know there's no, the no good enough mobility goals. though. So, yeah. I, don't, I don't know if there's enough mobility to get 40 I kills. I mean, Mary's got like... 33 with, without that, right? So with extra siphon on top of that, hey, my, 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 my boy, my boy, you know? <laughs> go, go son, go. Go son, go. Oh, God. <laughs> We're going to start taking credit now of Mary's places. Yeah. Yeah, that's, so that, we got a lot more than that in common, you know, like yeah, a, lot, yeah. a lot in common, so. Nah, I think that's the only thing you have a comment. Nah, I think that's it. I think yeah, that's no. pretty much nah, it. I think there's a few more things, yeah. Let's, let's, let's move on. Let's move on. To, what's the next topic, Lev? Yeah, what's the next topic? Uh, uh, <laughs> the next topic is goodbye. Get out of my faces, guys. Hey, we got there you go. Yeah. Shit to do. There you go. Perfect. Go mm -hmm. um, no, I, I mean, Siphon's good. Hopefully, we see more of it. It's funny, though, some of the things you were saying, like in terms of you know people being more aggressive. Oh, I didn't really feel a difference too much in comp, but it, 
These are all the things that the people at Epic who don't want Siphon will be loving. Yeah. Yes! Yeah, come, yeah on. come on. Quartz, just cut that out if you heard that. Uh, we say that. Uh, I did not mention yeah. that earlier. Yeah. Did not say that. The people at Epic who don't want Siphon. Reese doesn't get it. kills. He doesn't get look, kills. Look, look. Elims. He exactly, doesn't get Elims. Exactly. Exactly. I am not the person who's getting Elims. So mm. I'm not the person who's going to notice getting health. And when I do fight, Mate, the angles I take are so good. Not a single damage taken, mm, so I'm right. still 200 mm. HP by the end of it. So the siphon doesn't make that much difference anyway. That's so. funny because Harry was trying to get siphon this first oh, game, let's and like not. he didn't notice until like 50 minutes after they released it. Oh. Wait a second, siphon's not in the game because brother couldn't get a single fucking kill. Ranked, man. <laughs> it, so, was yeah, it, I... <laughs> it was the second game. It was the second game. I died at Doom's castle. So I got in the second uh. game. I dropped in the in Dooms in the first game of ranked and I got the coin and then I got a couple kills and I was like, oh weird, so it doesn't stack. Like the siphon doesn't yeah. add on to your 50 from the coin. And I went into Harry's chat and I was like, oh he was saying at the time, I was like, it doesn't stack. He's like, no, I just tested it, it does. I was like, and then I realized it was just yeah. there was just no siphon because it was bugged and I was just getting oh, the coin my. siphon instead. I was like, oh uh, well, yeah. Well. Also also one got planned this week then. Anyone got anything exciting cooking? When the duo cash up today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's basically it. Uh, I think Wesley. The, uh, oh, I know Dutch, Wesley. Yeah, yeah, yeah oh, Dutch yeah. player. Yeah. Poor Wesley, okay. man. Yeah. Poor Wesley. Yeah, he asked me, so oh, I, I just got that one. Fair enough. He's. His options are looking rough in this <laughs> case. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm also going to play the Duo Cash Cup, but probably slightly more successfully than Harry. Maybe it depends. Last week. Mate, DJ was having a mayor last week. I don't know what was going on. The the milks were coming out with something crazy. Oh, yeah. uh, so this week, I, me and him, I'm locking him in. He's he's fighting like a demon. He just actually needs to decide. He, he needs too confident. He's fighting too good right now, where he's like trying to jump in every box. Yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna rein him back, and we're gonna have a little PB Se performance this week. Yeah. I think seven end games. That's all you need. Yeah. Seven end games. We can do it. Three hour tournament though. I'm about I'm about asleep by the time it's over. So <laughs> You have that too on podcast day, you're just tired the rest of the day. Like, dude, I got my yap Bro, out. Well, well, that's it. I've got this and then do a cash card. Yeah, right? yeah, but just... one hour in, I'm going to be I'm gonna be in that bed by me and just DJ you solo it. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, me, me, I'm, I'm gonna be watching Duo Cash Cup. Um, you know, it's funny. Like every Friday and Sunday, there's a weird like tornado that goes through the Netherlands. It's really, really extreme weather, and I'm just unable to stream and watch those tournaments. So those reload uh, cups. Yeah, those reload. Uh, it's just a coincidence on the reload cup mm. days. So wow. yeah, it's, it's. I've, yeah, I've managed same. to recover the house. Uh, you know, it's, it's still standing. Back, yeah. But uh, who knows what'll happen next Friday? Um, but uh, I've been putting out been... YouTube videos, no. Yeah, I've been putting up YouTube videos now. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to rebuild the YouTube channel. Uh, I've been yapping a lot more on the YouTube because like people's like, dude, what's your opinion on this? And then instead of repeating it five times, I'm like, yo, there's a YouTube video, seven minute video about me talking about the siphon changes and why Epic Games thought it was a good or bad idea. You know, that's it. Like, I, I might as well and and try to grow that again. So the YouTube videos are back out and uh, yeah, streams are there. But I'm taking I'm taking time off like in the weekends because like I'm not gonna watch six days of tournaments. I'm just gonna hate reload two days of the week so might as well just stream five times a week and then just you know chill out the mm -hmm. rest of the week you know play mm -hmm. some trading card game simulator yeah uh, this is what it's so, so everyone who's banned in noble this is what boop is doing instead of unbanning you in noble right, and reading right. the noble reports <laughs> yeah i'm uh, did you, i know i'm on yeah did you stream do a cash cut last week you didn't right uh i did yeah oh I didn't. I didn't stream Eval Cup last week, but I've I've now okay. made the decision. Yeah, I'm gonna watch was. Eval Cups instead of the reload tournaments. Okay, because because it was funny because last week Tuesday I booted up my stream right randomly and I never booted up my stream. Um, mm -hmm. and Ozzy I think was flying, so he wasn't streaming either, and you weren't streaming. So like, yeah. um, it's like an hour before the the uh performance eval and i've got like 500 viewers and i'm like what mm. the fuck is going why is everyone here? mr I, aura i wasn't saying anything i was just sort of going with the flow like hey guys yeah i'm acting like i'm a 500 viewer <laughs> streamer you know like that's normal and then it hit me you know when i was going to like raid because i'm thinking let me just go raid boop he'll be watching this shit or whatever and it hit me and i'm like oh these fuckers don't want to watch this tournament. <laughs> and I don't either. And I fucking switched <laughs> off my stream. I'm, 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 I think you're going to profit and sit no, there and do like no, an eight-hour no, stream watching no, that shit. No, I'm not, I'm not watching that. I'm not watching it. <laughs> it, um, it it's, it's, it's enjoyable now with the siphon test. Well, so nah, like, I'm it's sure, actually yeah. saved a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm Might sure as well watch now. them now. It's better. Um, all right, then. Well, that's good to know. I'm going to be cooking. I got some things cooking up. Um, 
you know, I get a lot of people asking, oh, where's Hotline FM? This, oh, yeah, where's, this? where's this? Where's that? You know, I'm cooking some things up, guys. So stop spamming me. It only makes every comment I get that says, where's Hotline? Is another week of no Hotline. Um, I'm just letting you guys know that right now. Logging so. into the alts. <laughs> <laughs> right, Logging hey. into the main. <laughs> all right, you fuckers. Uh, have a good week. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Again, we will see you all next week with some more FNTasia podcast action. Appreciate you all for listening. Take care. Peace. Bye. Peace out.